wonderful, wonderful Tuesday, isn't it? George, you, 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 you remember this song from back yeah, in the day? Yeah, that's my favorite, you know, gospel It's your favorite? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that you were planning on recording your own album. I don't Look, know. I don't have the voice for that. So. <laughs> Good morning, guys. You know your place and you want to stay there because yeah. when people try to jump over, they become catastrophic in doing so. So I'm glad George agrees that that's not his fault. He was to sing in his bathroom and in his bedroom, and that's okay. No, trust me, God enjoys it when he hears your voice. It's just that you stay behind the scenes, and that's where maybe you're just meant to be with the voice. Because when you do your news, you do it gently. No one beats you at that. Exactly. It's always anyway, okay. guys. Hope, hope you had a good night. There's hope for the future. Yeah. But at least my girlfriend loves it when I sing to her. Mm -mm. Mm. Hey. That's what matters. But that's not for her to say, not for you to say. She told me it's okay, so. Nah, let's but just of course she told you. She wants to keep the, the relationship flourishing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Charlie, my, yeah. my night was cool. It was. Uh, yes, it was. It was. It was. Same. I, think I, was, I was a bit disturbed about the American uh, ambassador's yeah. you know, right, statement. Yeah. And I was thinking, wow, is this whole Gitmo 2 thing a pack of lies? What is it? I don't know. But today is a great day because Mr. John Agbako be appearing before Parliament. Yeah. Um, With Haji Amalima. Yes, Hi. yes, yes. Uh, I am, I'm happy. I'm but happy yeah, too. Yeah, you should appear. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's one of those issues that we would want them to go to parliament and then after a finality we brought yeah, exactly, to it exactly. rather than always bringing it back, you know, on the news because there are other interesting things or important things that we have to deal with. So we hope that they're going to, you know, parliament will bring some resolution yeah. to this um, <laughs> issue. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, but it is certainly yeah, an I issue mean, for us. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy, and I, w I wish our parliamentarians will ask um, yeah. the questions the that right are questions. on our minds exactly. as well, including exactly. those that are on their mind mm. as well. Um, because I'm looking at a remedy that will apply to those who have already been yeah. forced or coerced to to use names that are not mm. theirs. I'm, I'm looking for remedy for those people. Okay. And then, what's the name? Daily Guy tells us that thousand you know, illegal miners have been busted. Yes. It questions the efficiency of Operation Vanguard. It mm. you know? does. It does. Well, I mean, it not, not, not necessarily. Mm. I think that the Operation Vanguard has done quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also looking for collaboration between the, the locals and, and you, if you yeah. find most of these uh, arrests were instigated by the locals mm -hmm. themselves who right. couldn't stand it anymore. Mm -hmm. They thought that, well, just the mere fact that the people here that of Prophecy Vanguard is active, mm -hmm. yeah. they would... They okay, they will talk for exactly, a while. Exactly, but, but they are not. So yeah. now they are, they, the locals are volunteering information mm -hmm. which has led to the arrest of oh, these people. Right. My major concern is mm -hmm. that... Will we have custodial sentences for them, knowing that our prisons are full? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where will we be keeping them? Yeah. What happens to them? Are we going to, if you're going to find them, are we going to find them uh, very hefty fine yeah. so that they, they, it will serve as a deterrent to others? Yeah. Yeah. We should have, as Amma always says, finality to this. <laughs> so when you are, you are, you know, locked tweet down. and yeah. and lockdown. You know, yeah, you will feel really locked down. Exactly. Uh, yes, we can't continue to have this. I mean, look. Now we're rationing water. Yeah. The taps are not flowing properly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes two days you could go, no water. It is because of some of these things. It is. But, Johnny, you know, it's very interesting how we work as Ghanaians. Because you walk along the roads and almost every stretch of road you mm. pass by, you will see a pump or, a, you know, a pipe that is burst right. and is leaking water mm. so rampantly. That's it is right. almost everywhere. And you're wondering, is it that Ghana Water Corporation is doesn't know about these pipes mm. because usually you realize it's clean water yeah. and then you find little children trying to scoop the water mm. and the fact that it's burst on the ground then mm. contaminates it and it's no longer as clean as you'd want it to right. be and that water is just running away yeah. and we are being built for it we are paying for it <laughs> but if they could fix these pipes then at least those waters are channeled <laughs> rightly but where do much we have rather, a big issue know, uh, I would much rather want what was your name electricity to be rationed than mm. water. Water is life, you know. It is. But uh, uh, already people electricity. people experience rationing of water some way somehow, like in the yes. Adenta areas yes. where they've Coming never really yeah. had water, mm. so they're always mm. buying, and so it's a big issue. Well, I hear Adenta now has water, but for That's many good. years well, they didn't, and yeah. it was I mean, a lifestyle where you, have water. you, if you to go buy to water. Teshi, for example, the desalination project mm. has also come under a lot exactly. of flag, but. Uh, Rightly as you stated, around the police headquarters, mm. um, uh, no, the police hospital, I must say, right. okay. the police hospital, mm. yeah. there's a pipe that's been bust in the gutter for, for nearly a year. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, I have made calls to the toll-free number of the water mm -hmm. company. Uh, I know that others have also called them. Mm -hmm. right. It's not been fixed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because it's in the gutter. Mm. Okay. But like Amma said, 
it's bust up to a point, you can still get supply in your home. Okay. It means that it's picking up the whatever bacteria, yeah. whatever it is, and then you may be getting snippets of it in your home. And it's this look, so many of these circumstances around the nation, and we we are being built for them. We are being built yeah. for them. Whether you like it or so not. then you will find a that water, water, Kingdom, water, uh, water company and ECG run to a PURC and tell mm -hmm. them, oh, cost of production is high, mm -hmm. so, so increase the tariff, types. and then we will be paying. But it is the leakages and the illegal Which connection is that is causing us mm -hmm. the trouble. Kalis will mm -hmm. tell you, Ghana is a cartoon kingdom. Anything happens. Is it what? It is cartoon, cartoon kingdom. kingdom. Okay. We're all Anything joking. Where Tom and Jerry could be fighting <laughs> and then they could become friends. Okay, it's all right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> News is up next. <laughs> right there. Thanks for saying and we start off with security. Well, one person has been arrested for forgery in the police recruitment exercise. 4,000 applicants are undergoing physical screening in the week-long exercise. Applicants besieged National Police Training School Monday morning, some as early as 4 a.m. to be screened after being shortlisted by the recruitment committee after the completion of the online application in the latter part of last year. Unlike the previous years, the parade ground was well barricaded to prevent unauthorized persons from entering the inner perimeter. Anyone who failed at any of the stages was shown the exit. Officials were on hand to continually remind the applicants of the rules. So check your documentation again and be sure you'll be asked to come to NPTS, Accra. If you don't have that on your voucher, then go to wherever you've been directed to go. The orderly exercise saw the applicants going through physical body examination. We have our director general on the ground, I'm also on the ground. If the teams are not sure of anything, they bring the particular candidate to us for further verification before we endorse whether a person has failed or can be considered. The second stage was the academic and document examination to ensure information provided during the online registration were accurate. It was during this process that one applicant was arrested. You know what? people can do with photocopies these days. If you can't be here with photocopies, we won't attend to you. Then people who have fake, fake documents, we won't attend to them. When you are found out, you'll be arrested. Director of Police Public Affairs Director DSP Shila Bayi Bakman spelled out more details about the process. The qualification relates to nationality, they relate to age, they relate to height, they relate to some academic or professional qualification. The first stage of the application process is passed and gone. This is the second stage, which is the physical screening and body selection. And there are some more stages, including background vetting and examination, including medical assessment. Some applicants spoke to the news team. Yeah, I'm disqualified. My height was 5.4. I will not be able to come to police or any other of armed forces, but I want to further my education. Oh, it was okay. It's just that the forming of the queue was a little bit difficult. But then we went through successfully. Your height and then your legs. Yeah. They read your certificate. They will check on your height, your stomach, your hip, your teeth, your leg, your hands, everything. Yes, I'm ready for it. Ready for yes, it. I will do it. The week-long process will end with an aptitude test. Away from security, let's shift to a development that is making all the headlines, where U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Robert Porter Jackson, has expressed shock that Ghana has granted the two as Guantanamo Bay detainees brought into the country about two years ago refugee status. Speaking to journalists in Temale, he says the American government has washed its hands off the Gitmo II after the two-year contract expired. Parliament resumed sitting with news from government that the two former Guantanamo Bay detainees had been granted refugee status. The Ministry of Interior has informed my ministry of records at the Refugee Board, which revealed that 
the government at the time granted the two detainees refugee status. The posturing of the then NDC government and now MPP government has come under intense criticism by international relations experts. When they were brought into the country, the Americans stated the role they were playing. We're going to help with the remuneration of the expense of the residency and food, etc., um, for the period for the first period of time. But the U.S. government has been taken aback with the latest information. I did not know <coughs> until this week that they had been granted refugee status. Mm. Um, that came as, as much of a surprise to me as it came to all of you. The two former Guantanamo Bay detainees, Mahmoud Umar Mohammed Bin Atef and Khalid Muhammad Salih Al Dubi, have been in Ghana over the last two years. Still on this development, we bring you the sequence of events that led to the coming of the two Guantanamo detainees into the country. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful Tuesday, isn't it? George, you, 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 you remember this song from my Yeah, Lubin yeah. is my favorite, you know, goes your favorite? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that you were planning on recording your own album. I Look, don't, I don't have the voice for that. So. <laughs> Good morning, guys. You know your place and you want to stay there because yeah. when people try to jump over, they become catastrophic yeah. in doing so. So I'm glad George agrees that that's not his fear. He was it's thinking in his bathroom and in his bedroom and that's bad. okay. No, trust me, God enjoys when he hears so your really voice. It's just that you stay behind the scenes and that's where maybe you're just meant to be with the voice okay. because when you do your news you do it gently exactly. no one beats you at exactly. that exactly it's always anyway okay. guys Don't worry. hope you had a good night there's hope for the future yeah. at least my girlfriend loves it when i sing to her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. that's what matters but that's not for her to say not for you to say she told me it's okay so <laughs> ah, but of course she tell you she wants to keep one. the relationship <laughs> flourishing <laughs> exactly <laughs> but Charlie, my, yeah. my night was cool it uh, was yes it was it was same i was i was a bit disturbed about the american ambassador's comment Statement. Yeah. And I was thinking, wow, mm. is this whole Gitmo 2 thing a pack of lies? Yeah. Exactly. What is it? Mm. I don't know. Who is saying uh, the truth? But today is a great day because Mr. John Agbak will be appearing before Parliament. Yeah. Um, With Haji Amalima. Yes, Hi. yes, yes. Uh, I am, I'm happy. I'm but happy yeah, too. Yeah, you should up here. But it's one of those issues that we would want them to go to Parliament and then after a finality we brought exactly, to it exactly. rather than always bringing it back, you know, on the news because there are other interesting things or important things that we have to deal with. So we hope that they're going to, you know, Parliament will bring some resolution yeah. to this uh, <laughs> issue. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, but it is certainly yeah, an I issue mean, for us. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy, and I, w I wish our parliamentarians will ask um, yeah. the questions the that right are questions. on our minds exactly. as well, including exactly. those that are on their mind mm. as well. Um, because I'm looking at a remedy that will apply to those who have already been yeah. forced Affected. or coerced to to use names that are not mm. theirs. I'm, I'm looking for a remedy for those things. Okay. And then, what is the name? Daily Guy tells us that 1,000 you know, illegal miners have been busted. Yes. It questions the efficiency of Operation Vanguard. It certainly you know? does. It certainly does. does. Well, I mean, it not, not, we not necessarily. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful Tuesday, isn't it? George, you, 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 you remember this song from my yeah, yeah. Lubin Kitea is my favorite, you know, goes to your favorite? Yeah. 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 I, I thought that you were planning on recording your own album. I don't, Look, know. I don't have the voice for that. <laughs> Good morning, guys. You know your place and you want to stay there because yeah. when people try to jump over, they become catastrophic yeah. in doing so. So I'm glad George agrees that that's not the, his the fear. He was thinking in his bathroom and in his bedroom and that's okay. No, trust me, God enjoys when he hears your voice. It's just that you stay behind the scenes and that's where maybe you're just meant to be with the voice okay. because when you do your news you do it gently exactly. no one beats you at exactly. that exactly it's always anyway okay. guys Don't worry. hope you had a good night there's hope for the future yeah. but at least my girlfriend loves it when i sing to her mm -mm. Mm. Hey. that's what matters but that's not for her to say not for you to say she told me it's okay so <laughs> nah, but of course she tell you she wants to our, keep the relationship flourishing <laughs> exactly <laughs> but Charlie, my, and yeah. my night was cool it was uh, yes it was, it was. It was. same I, think I, was, I was a bit disturbed about the american uh, ambassador's statement and i was thinking wow is this whole Gitmo 2 thing a pack of lies? Yeah, exactly. What is it? Mm. I don't know. Who is saying uh, the truth? But today is a great day because Mr. John Agbak will be appearing before Parliament. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. 
uh, I am, I'm happy. I'm but happy yeah, too. Yeah, you should appear. You should appear. But it, it's one of those issues that we would want them to go to parliament and then after a finality we brought exactly. to it exactly. rather than always bringing it back, you know, on the news because there are other interesting things or important things that we have to deal with. So we hope that they're going to, you know, parliament will bring some resolution yeah. to this uh, <laughs> issue. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, but it is certainly yeah, an I issue mean, for us. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy, and I, w I wish our parliamentarians will ask um, yeah. the questions the that right are questions. on our minds exactly. as well, including exactly. those that are on their mind mm. as well. Um, because I'm looking at a remedy that mm. will apply to those who have already been yeah. forced or coerced to to use names that are not mm. theirs. I'm, I'm looking for remedy for those. Okay. And then, what is the name? Daily Guy tells us that thousand, you know, illegal miners have been busted. Yes. It questions the efficiency of Operation Vanguard. It mm. You know, does. It does. Well, I mean, it not not we not necessarily. Mm. I think that the Operation Vanguard has done quite a lot, mm -hmm. um, but they're also looking for collaboration between, between the the locals and and you, if mm. you find most of these uh, are who's connecting to us, we are actually going through a list of tests to ensure that it's working the way it should be. We sign off and then we are ready to go. The mobile money interoperability contract was first awarded to Simpton Switch at a cost of 4.6 billion cities, but Gibbs is carrying it out at an estimated cost of 4 million cities. And government has released over 30 million cities to persons with disability and persons living with HIV and AIDS. The amount released through the District Assembly Common Fund Secretariat covers the fourth quarter of 2016 and the first, second and third quarters of 2017. The funds were delayed owing to the lack of data on the number of beneficiaries. 28 million cities has been allocated persons with disability and 2 million cities to persons living with HIV and AIDS. 10% of the fund is to be used to offset education bills and another 10% for medical bills. The remaining 80% is to be used for economic empowerment of beneficiaries. Beneficiaries, however, have consistently blamed the welfare committees for shortchanging them. Assuming they gave somebody 1,000 Ghana, they will write 1,000, but they will give you only 600. I want to believe that that's not true. I really want to believe that. Because going forward, that will not be tolerated. We will go to the district courts and send them there and have them punished. Because this money is for persons with disability. Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, the president, graciously moved it from 2% to 3%. The District Assembly Common Fund Administrator, Natoshi Ado, warned against such practice. In the past, four people or five people enjoyed the entire money. Some of them will say, oh, they're going to school. Some were partisan-based. Some were relatives of uh, DCs or coordinating directors or heads or, you know, that kind of thing. They were in charge. So they did what they wanted. But now, we are in charge. And the media is in charge. Those who have already benefited from such funds are expected to be weaned off. One of these places to register people. And I hear people were pretending to be deaf and dumb. Then they got a call. One person got a call. He quietly looked at his side and went outside. When he was talking, somebody heard him and knocked him. And then he started talking. So the first group, and if we can do 50 per district, that's over 10,000. And if we do 100 per district, that's over 21,000. And that's what I'm looking at. Meanwhile, the Select Committee on the Common Fund is to visit six regions to identify persons with disability and HIV AIDS. And now to a more worrying development where Josephine Oliver of Ola Senior High School at Ho in the Volta region has been reported missing from Friday, December 22, 2017. The 16-year-old girl was uh, allegedly left uh, the school for vacation holidays and has since not returned home. A counselor of the SOL Children Village, Salome Esid Ada, on January 18, 2018, called on Tema Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit, Dovsu, and reported her 16-year-old daughter, Josephine Oliver, missing. According to the police report, Josephine Oliver left Ola Girls Senior High School at home in the Volta region on Friday, December 22, 2017, and has since not returned home. All efforts made in tracing the 16-year-old Josephine Oliver have proved futile. She is therefore pleading with the general public to assist her fine uh, Oliver. 
she was last seen in her school uniform. Anyone who has information of her whereabouts, so please contact the number 0244-707151 or any police station near you. And now to the, uh, to the labor front, where the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, and Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, say the high cost of living in the country could be blamed on frequent increases in petroleum prices at the local pumps. According to the ICU and the Chamber, increases in petroleum prices at the local pumps normally translate into higher prices for other goods and services. The General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, Solomon Kote, at a media conference indicated the constant fuel price hikes in the country has shot up the cost of living for many Ghanaians. The net effect of these rampant price, pump prices increases is a corresponding increase in prices of foodstuffs, goods and services, import duties and inflation generally as basic necessities of life shoot up in the face of rather stagnant mega incomes and salaries of Ghanaian workers. He indicated the high cost of living is made worse with the Ghanaian appetite for imported products. History of this country shows these scenarios become a recipe for labor agitations for upward salary adjustment. The ICU General Secretary was, however, evasive whether or not labor will call for pay rise. The issue of salary, we will look at it this way. Um, clearly, our constitution says that equal work for equal pay. Once we work, we must be remunerated. And our remuneration is also tied up to the productivity of the institution. So once the institution where we work in, our productivity lines is without any argument. Obviously, the worker and the union will continue to make our fair demand of what we have struggled, labored, and produced. And that was my colleague uh, Daniel Poku coming through with that report. On to other news, the 12 suspects in connection with the Kwabanya police station attack have been arranged before court. The case could, however, not be heard owing to the unavailability of the judge. Silo Mamenya was in court and has come through with the following report. There was heavy security presence at the court. The case could, however, not be heard owing to the unavailability of the judge, his honor, Abuaje Tando. The prosecution also had to amend their fact sheet. The case was therefore adjourned to Tuesday, January 30. The attack on the police station on Sunday, January 21, led to the escape of seven suspects. A police officer on duty, Inspector Emmanuel Ashilevi, was also killed in the attack. A manhunt by the Accra Police Command led to the arrest of the 12 suspects. That's it by way of news this morning here on New Day. My name is Josh Crane. For more news updates, just log on to our website, 3news.com. Just so you know, anything that makes you happy does not need approval from anyone. Just be yourself. I'm Josh Crane. Have a good morning. It's time for newspaper headlines. We'll start off with a find that says Tor and IES face off over forced shutdown of refinery just 16 days after its resumption. Also, campaign against mother to child HIV transmission would be relentless. That's coming from the First Lady. Also, Efia Kotobek Senor Hosi to escape 8 million Ghana CD suits. Then, Ghana Water Company is to publish a water rationing timetable. Hmm. Interesting there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and that's that's for me is is much most critical because um, mm. there are a lot of, if you like, eateries and factories who right. use water, mm. who need water, and I'm wondering the kind of impact that will have on their operations, right. and whether the Ghana Water Company Limited it's is planning yeah. on s sorting them out mm. because you know it will have a ripple effect. Yeah. If, for example, the companies that produce the sachet water. Or a, a big restaurants, yeah. the big restaurants or chop bars where people go and depend on, uh, or even the public toilets. Right. Um, how do we sort them out? Mm. Are they in our equation? Okay, so how do we do the rationing so that it also covers these people? That's my yeah. major, major, major concern. But it only tells us that global warming is here, mm. climate change is here, mm. uh, the activities of galamseyers are here. Right. 
and the fact that we keep selling our buffer zones and the river banks. Go to Wager and see. Mm. There are people living right on the bank of the river. And you know that the, it has its own signs of curing itself. The river yeah. has its own signs of curing itself and coming back mm -hmm. so that the debris are, are washed up to the banks and then you can have a thoroughfare for the water to go right. through. You, can't, you don't get it these days. Okay. So with a little drizzle, the place is full because right. we have been blocked all the waterways. Right. And you're wondering, the thing is supposed to be a cycle. It's supposed to run down, get into the sea, come back up, run down like that. Yep. So when you block it, what are you doing? We are hurting ourselves. We certainly we are. We are hurting Don't ourselves. Even, again, as Ghana Water Company would like to, you know, blame the environmental factors as they were for some of these issues, I think they have to look introspectively and realize that some of the challenges actually do come from themselves. Because what about the times where the rain is in abundance? Mm. Do they have any plans to make sure that we store these waters so that in the time when there's shortage, mm. they can provide adequately? Then again, we talk about these pipes that are leaking mm. in places which is so obvious. I, I mean... It's, I seem to stand corrected, but it's of, you see them along the roadsides. And where do these Ghana Water Company workers, employers, definitely live in these areas? And so they can identify when you go to work, you can go and tell your boss or whoever that there's this place where I think we should have a look at. Because mm. you have these runoff waters that could be harnessed, channeled, and given to even the areas that lack water. But right. we don't do that. And then when there's a big issue of shortage, then we all start screaming, and now we're mm. going to be rationing. Uh, if that's the best way for it, certainly mm. we don't have anything to right. say, but go ahead. But before these hard times come, can mm. we make, you know, as it were, gather for the times when it's we don't have water rather mm. than just cry, 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 and then when the big issue comes, then we're just lamenting over it. I, I, I find it very <laughs> preposterous. The Ghana Water Company for a long time has not rationed water. And so for now, I would believe that we're going into very dire circumstances, and that is why they will come up with these issues. Again, when they, you know, t close the taps, as right. it when they open mm. it, the mm. pressure with which the taps run, yeah. it amazes me. Because, Johnny, sometimes in the evenings especially, that's when most of these areas have to deal with this. Right. And if you've left a pipe on, remember, most mm. people go to sleep at these times. And so I would expect that the education on how to keep our mm. water from running off, from spilling, from wastage, is they'll make these things often mm. so that people are reminded of how to conserve water rather than waste it and then come and talk about it like i remember when we were younger mm -hmm. they used to tell us it's better to bath with a bucket of water than to the running right. water of oh. course people would enjoy running water yeah. than the bucket yeah. but if you keep educating on the need to do this mm. then i understand that okay if i open a shower this is the amount of water that i waste and so if i use a bucket i'm conserving a lot more for the next person out there mm. not only for myself then i'd appreciate it and understand why i should do that on a regular I think the also I, th I think also yes uh, education is important but uh, in this era where I mean it's the same way we treat electricity mm. where people think that oh because I can afford it because I can pay for it uh, mm. when you're coming to work they leave their lights on they leave gadgets on and Everything. yes I can pay for it so you get into somebody's uh, hall or living room and mm. you have the TV on the radio is on the fan is uh, on the, the fan is on, on. it's Everything. finished microwaving is food but the microwave is mm. left unattended to and everything is on because right. he can afford yeah he can afford it. it we don't think about the next person mm. uh, also, we don't talk about recycling much in this country right. because there's so much of our water resources that we could perhaps recycle mm -hmm. and use. Mm -hmm. I think that the Teshi desalination project, project is one of the greatest things right. that we have. Add to that, there's also water that we could recycle and use to water our gardens mm -hmm. or flower beds mm -hmm. uh, to, to wash our cars and all of that. You don't need to use clean, potable water, yeah. whereas others can't get water to drink. Right. And then you will use water because mm -hmm. you... Sometimes it's... I've gone to a couple of big men's homes where... Uh, big men who... When, when, when they have uh, the, the hose connected and left in the garden mm. or in the lawn. Yeah. So the water flows ah, then, you know, until they think it's okay, and then they come and close the tap. And you're wondering, so yes, you can pay for it, but are you thinking about the man down the lane who doesn't, who doesn't have it. water, mm -hmm. uh, who has to struggle and carry what they call the kufor gallons or the yellow gallons, mm -hmm. the man who's had to go and queue and get it, the man who's had to uh, contract private borehole drillers to mm -hmm. come and drill borehole. And guess what? In, on the issue of drilling boreholes, mm. there's what I call the water bed, mm -hmm. or what is called the water bed. Yeah. Now, what kind of testing do we do? Do we take it mm. to the, uh, the science people, the Water Research Institute, to test it for us? Mm. Because know that 
in, in this country, people do their manholes and they has suck away. Yeah. Where does the water go? Somebody has used a manhole for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. or maybe eight years, five years. The, the, the uh, uh, excreta or feces has never been, has never been pulled out before. Now, but that's the reality. It's okay. too early, but it's the reality. It's not even been pulled out before. Then the man next door mm -hmm. doesn't have water. It doesn't have a reservoir. Right. So he engages those who come and dig the borehole. Mm -hmm. Nobody does any test. Mm -hmm. They just put the machine down. Pff, the water start oozing out. Do you know if what it, it may have you no know, elements of this? And so I'm not surprised people report that they have typhoid and mm -hmm. they have a man of It's because you're eating somebody's this thing. And, okay. you know, we need to be very cautious about some of these things. Yeah. Again, it is a social protection issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing much of Madame Otiko Jaba. I am not. You see, social protection is not about just putting a few girls together and, and telling them that it is well and perhaps mm -hmm. giving them hand downs or saying that 20 or 40 girls, we are learning how to sew. Social protection is way bigger than that. Mm. I mean, I think that when the president was appointing our ministers, he told them what he wants from them. And okay. he told us why he was bringing them into that office. Hmm. Mr. Kofiada, for example, he's not excited that the Australian ambassador, Andrew Barnes, tweeted, tweeted. about the, the rubbish and it's gained ambassadorial and international status. Mm -hmm. But rightly so. The man yeah, felt embarrassed it by it. Exactly. That yes, you come and take property rate from him. <laughs> that yes, you come and uh, pick sanitation fees from mm -hmm. him. And yet, next door, right in front of him, yeah. there's a day, must he leave his embassy to go and clean it, whereas we're employing people to do that. I mean, he's just saying that we should support everybody to do the work. Certainly. He has gone to win that, that, that point. And I, look, I, I think that sometimes we joke too much in this country. We joke way too much in this country. Water is being rationed, and it is not a funny thing at all. Water is being rationed. It is not a funny thing at all. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, I would like to touch on the tall IES face-off because, Johnny, oftentimes when they put up institutions, it seems when it comes to the maintenance, there's a big issue. I, for one, I mean, oftentimes we hear when they take power, they'll say, well, it wasn't my, during my time that this happened. And so I have just come into office. I'm yet mm. to see what exactly was to roll out. But you started operations in January 2nd, too. And then you are forced to close down January 18 because some of your equipment is not working. Certainly, I find that to be wrong for the director mm. or management of TOR. You should know what works because TOR is a very vital institution for mm. us. Definitely, we know what we, we rely on TOR for. And so mm. we can't have it shutting down unexpectedly. And of course, I can understand IES for closing them down because we also don't want something to go amiss where mm. people's lives are lost or there's a drastic, you know, catastrophe out of that. And so it's not only for TOR, but all these institutions, they should take precautions to make sure that the management procedures take place. If you came into office and you knew that in 2011, 2013, 2015, mm. we didn't carry out any shutdown turnaround around maintenance, then you should be worried. You shouldn't start work yeah. when you know that is there yeah. until someone comes to alert mm. you. I think that's wrong. It shouldn't happen again. I, I, I've decided not to talk about some of these <laughs> things because we have all the experts who should know better, yeah. and yet they do uh, otherwise. Anyway, so mm. page 18 of the Ghanaian Times this morning says that please grab fake soldier in Sawam. It says mm. a self-styled military officer has been busted by the police at Intuasunia in Sawam in the eastern region. Uh, Prince Ferguson SL, who is 27, is reported to have paraded himself as captain of the Ghana Army, uh, the Ghana Armed Forces, for the past seven years. Mm. Uh, so some military officers were, you know, informed of his... Uh, uh, terrorizing the residents around there. They went to his house. They asked him about some military terms, including his number, uh, unit, among others, and he could not answer. Mm. So they took him out there and they, they issued a few uh, handshakes to him in a military manner. Take a look at this uh, briefly. Um, uh, VR discretion is advised. Well, that's not, I mean, I, I think that we're having one too many of those ones. Mm. Uh, you are not a military man, you are not a police officer, you parade yourself as such. What is the motivation? And they don't even learn rights. Johnny, I would feel if you wanted to, you know, <laughs> fake something, do it right, at least. Let it be worth it. Because you should understand the rankings, you should understand whose name you go and take, you should understand even the medals and, uh, you know, the uniform in totality. Mm. So He said he's a captain. And he has no idea. Yes, and his subordinates are uh, slapping him. It's... I don't know. I, this has come under a lot of flack. People think that, well, the soldiers shouldn't have issued the slaps. I, I take a different view to it and forget about human rights. Uh, so he's been slapping people himself. And I don't know, but this is certainly wrong. It's not yet. Now he's pleading that he wants to go to court. But Johnny, we keep saying that you can't, you know, fight 
um, illegality with illegality mm. or some wrongdoing with wrongdoing. Mm. We all have to understand that what is good for the goose is certainly good for the gander. Mm. In as much as he has perpetrated some wrongdoings by slapping people, there should be decorum. There's a code of conduct. And I certainly don't believe this is the code of conduct for the police. Mm. And so you shouldn't. And we, we get to see it. You see, right now, everything mm. comes on social media. Mm. People will record and it will come out there. And so at the end of it, you don't, it's not justified. Just because he did well, wrong, I, it, he also it, it, it is would not a, it is not. It is not a justification. Because mm. if you look at the video carefully, he's been asked to undress, right. take off. And he says, well, he cannot do it any longer. So, uh, you know, you have to minimal force. Uh, yes. Because, I mean, to become a captain, it's not a joke. Uh, it's isn't. not a joke. It is not a joke. Look, to even want to, I mean, fake it is mm, wrong in itself. See, it's a crime. Look, f right from zero, private soldier to lance corporal to corporal to sergeant to staff sergeant to W three W two W one to second lieutenant to lieutenant to captain. Can you imagine? Well. On the lighter and note, I'm sure the slaps and the hits were all because see, of how he had, you know, asked people to become subordinate to him when really he had mm, no rank at all. See, he you know. he could, I'm sure he that's could just one slap. See, he couldn't control one himself. Hefty slap. I, I think, look, while, while, while it may not be entirely correct for the, for the military to be slapping the man, I mean, I think that's a CID as well, uh, issuing the slap there. Uh, he should be booked and properly dealt with. Exactly. I think that also. Um, the military has a way of coding their uniforms. Mm. Every uniform has a name to it. So the military must then do an introspection plus the police. Who gave him the uniform? Mm -hmm. Whose name is on the uniform? Is it that of his father mm. or that of a relative? Or did he steal it? Mm. How did that, that uniform get out there right. with the ranks? And if you look at the photo in, on page 18 of the Ghanaian mm. Times, he has the original ranks. The metallic ranks, the mm. original ones, the original pecs on his shoulder. And for me, that's that's a security issue. Uh, and it's, he's not the first. We have had plenty of people who mm -hmm. have styled themselves as store. If, I mean, if you want to join the military or the police, uh, well, go, go to the training. Exactly. Uh, yes, Didn't he see people the, queuing yes. for it yesterday? So go to the so. training. Why do you want to become... And I think that he gave himself off because <laughs> these are obviously it's supposed to be his subordinates, yep. if that's if he's a correct soldier. And they saw him and they couldn't believe that, well, our, our, captain, our captain is dressed like this and he's, he's walking about misconducting himself. Because once you wear the ranks and you're a commissioned officer, mm. you are a gentleman. You yes. are a formed gentleman. Right. You don't behave in a certain way. Certainly. So you will not find a commissioned officer mm -hmm. of the military or, if you like, an officer of the military mm -hmm. behave in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, a man with pecs on his shoulder behave in that way. You will not find it. So... I think that we should have let the Lord deal with him properly. And you see, he was so willing and ready to go into jail because perhaps mm -hmm. he knows that he will go and cool off and mm -hmm. nothing will happen to him. Right. He will go and cool off. No, but maybe he was actually begging for that because what he was suffering under them was too much for Only him. Only one that slap. He is but been slapping him people for seven years. He was, you know, holding his head and having to but he's stabilize been, he's himself. Been slapping so I'm sure people after for that, years. his brain started kicking in that, no, yeah. I think it would be safer yeah. to actually go to the prison. I'm sure the, the slap restored him to factory settings. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But guys, it's time to <laughs> run. Do you think we push our leaders <laughs> too far, especially in the, in the light of Dr. Baumia traveling to abroad? And some videos have been released saying that he's doing well. We saw him on the streets of London with his wife. Do you think we have caused this video to come out or really it was just a statement out there to let you know that he is well let's see what you have to say about this i think that our leaders George don't trust Clinton. our system end of story they don't trust <laughs> if they trust it they will get medical help here they certainly. don't trust the system certainly mm. because me and you when we are sick we'll go to kolibu achimota hospital mm -hmm. yes so why why can't why can't they ah, really? who knows? they anyway, don't trust us let's see what people have to say out there with george queen in on the streets of accra this is We are told by the presidency that the vice president, Dr. Baumia, uh, is in the UK for medical leave. And some say he's got stroke, others say he's on a sickbed. But 
over the weekend we saw a viral video of him and his wife on the streets of London just to prove a point that he's fine we can also talk about the late Atta Mills who also proved a point by jogging on the tarmac when people said you know he was also on his sick bed and so the question is don't you think we are pushing our leaders to the world that they want to prove a point and also let's critique the viral video of Dr. Balmia on the streets of London this is Daily Rant let's keep talking Oh, yeah, 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 and yet he said, Baumia, a Yaramoko Yuki. And today, any man say, Yeah, train consists and Hubertona or Beba. And I am Raya, who say, We travel you as any say, No, 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 and more coba. So no one can send him send a home not their gunner for Kenti. And not the video Beba, on Connie and Sanya, because he has obeyed me to a man. Moon didn't patch it. Say, Be our home to now by force. Nipper by Kenti, but the video by seven water, be sure our home and so I saw Yala, all man who told no marriage, because a Jumo by Yamagan and see a two of a man. Near two of a man's own quad, which no one could videos in Messenia. Maybe I mean, to me, Bounia video no and a wrong. Because Sabonia, I can say why video about to convince Ghana and say, or Yare, or Yaria, or such a video about problem Kakraka, so that's it. Why is that? Or a vice meeting to become a But I saw Sia from Atamus. Got a phone, yeah, no one is quite a muso. The Watamus or Bayano, yet I see or Yare, or Kodina Port, or a jogger, or Yantena bleeding. So I say, it's a whole church, who can be done for Britain and maybe we have been done now. Vania, Baby Chumu, or who has it, or who can he? So that's it, as a department, or Yare. So as in the man, case they gonna focus, do you want to prove Ghana say wrong? But still, they are in Asia. So as okay, the way in Nigeria, so no problem. There's a problem. In the between, in Ghana, on go back to reverse. On go stand, we are fine. On bra fit. No matter what, or or advice. In the end, say we are in say. Oh, say can't be what I'm saying. Can't ya. So as in, so as in, young case advice. So as in, no matter what, no matter what, so no. We say we are in, we are fit. We are better. So, but when case they are in, we are hunting. We are, 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 Vice President Baumia, so when I know to na moon the gun for it. At your say, only power is a lay. Now say, on my now woman, see when a wise as young gun here, we are playing this in the MP. And you know, send this in Nipon or Yalia or Simon Yale. Now I may know we are unquiet. What's your name? Oh, Jay, what's the machine you make? Because of you, Biba Kafa, and yes, Christo and Angus and all your son, no, your dear baby. And you know, man, come for it. It's a wounded brother said, No, Biba can be a found one. And we tell you, we are meant to you crown with someone I didn't know you can't want to. Now, so could trash you and our young man. Can you pass you your lamp? One I like a move from my coils and one hour and see my name. Nasa, I didn't know what now you can work with pictures. I don't want to do what I don't say. I don't say. I don't say. I don't say. I don't President, you know, on your own corner, you know, or between my and then I will choose as you have voted as a vice, you know. And told him, so on his own, yeah, on Yalea. Video, no, you know, only you kill on a move. So on his own Yalea. But I knew, okay, then was your own Yale. Yes, I'll bet you a video, a young quack, a young quack, a young quack, but I tell you so. Shall some about almost when you're stroke, a bit sort of a wound pass. In the act, I am at this, and I must have you, but I can't miss my young guy. I draw again. That's the other, yeah, let's blame ourselves. Vice President Yare, or call it Nico UK. Yeah, Yale say, Nayan, Multimedia, Yale, and the same do, and I saw Yare no ho. What I say, who in Ghana so? Do be a kind of bend and look away when you ask for the way say. It is a one person, a mad who win your renowned water. Yet to a bamma, who said, Mumma may age, my room was enough abroad. What I say? They are two of us, you can form a more boom man, one will be able to life for her. I said, I know two kind of speaker of parliament. No, a gentleman, M. Semi who cried two or three. That's a one to know to me, trust you, but by age, man. And I say, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, it is all for them now, Prince Ayan to Abayan to Abema. Man, friend, yes, and yet, yes, and yet, my friend. Unum, Unum, what's up, Ghana? Who say Ghana has a way and this MPP? Share the MPP for the year and this, you know, and then and this for the year. So I say, Atamus, you didn't anchor. 
Hey, at me say, and so if you had this for and be for that by So that's it. And then we say the people that went opposition, the same people who criticize you. And pen you free, yeah, to abam some one try and move my name my muna baby cosswa, yeah friend penny for near boman qua liar, friend penny for a bo mamma ne say, send it send it say na yeah. Elko, it's a motion, not some muni now moko moonyal you. So u penny po to quite nasa unyal nash in your Smakotra, you can president to Ben, what what an the vice president to Ben, what bagan a bit to chow us up was set or the ass and you what I say. I I can miss where we knew and moon send the brand of the egg but chat the alcohol. It's a similarity. What's up, 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 what's what <laughs> 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 When I want to be a good one, and if I saw to be as a whole brand, I would do it. I don't know. 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 I how does it? And I make it up for the first place and say, maybe in the air tonight, a little more palace. But I can't go beyond the air. You've been a peer, 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 you've been a a opposition who never say, "Hey, I'm a bit sucker now, I'm against her." Oh, 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 Ministry for peace, love, and unity. That's all. Okay. So, without Okay, so oh. you've, you've had the thoughts and concerns from the public with regards to the viral video of the vice president and wife on the streets of London. You are just a message away from this discussion. Just log on to our social media platforms on Facebook as News on TV3 and on Twitter as a News TV3. We came to you from Flagstaff House here at Accra. Thanks for watching and keep watching your day.
Welcome. Thank you very much. The Ghanaian Times says, President launches Universal Declaration of Human Rights Anniversary Celebration. Please grab fake soldier at Inswam and mass migration by Africans to Europe. Tobia further slams politicians for failure to end poverty on the continent. The Daily Guide this morning says, Daily Guide picks top spot. Kwabinya attack ring leader smoked out. Police screen recruits. Thousand illegal miners busted in Ibrahim Saw's uh, Flagstaff house. The Daily Statement says, Name ban saga, Occupy Ghana threatens to sue. Why treat Dr. Baumia abroad? AJ Safo answers. And police seek divine protection against death shadow cast on service. Let's improve our human rights. Akufado charges African leaders. The Daily Heritage this morning says, A fact that it causes confusion in Galamse Queen's trial. Sick girl 18 abandoned to die. An incompetence brews at um, my oil refinery. The... Uh, Daily Graphic says, Merge Accreditation Board, Council for Tertiary Education uh, Committee. Um, ministry to restrain speaker from multiple swearing in, uh, minority, I beg your pardon, to restrain speaker from uh, multiple swearing in. And public edifices lose beauty. They are defaced with posters. And finally, on the front page of the Finder newspaper, it says, Tor IES face off over forced shutdown of refinery just 16 days after uh, resumption. Campaign against mother-to-child HIV transmission uh, won't be relentless. My guest this morning, Comrade Mutala Mohammed. Chief, good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen you. Yeah. Sweet smoke you have there. Yeah, and beautiful dress. This is borrowed shadow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that is the reason why you should go made in Ghana. I hear you. I hear you. Any New Year resolutions? Well, I have resolutions throughout the time, throughout the, the years. I don't have specific resolutions for specific years. And my resolutions are that truth stands at all times. It doesn't matter who it hurts or who it pleases. At any point in time, you, you should speak the truth. And in societies, when you are that kind of a person who speaks your mind and speaks the truth, you are bound to incur the wrath of, of many and, of course, the silent majority who will be pleased with, with your stance. Mm -hmm. And I also think that we sanitize our politics and understand that at any point in time, you don't necessarily need to defend, defend everything mm -hmm. or against everything. You always need to, to speak the truth. And if, if you read a lot about uh, Malcolm X, mm -hmm. he, there's a, a very powerful you know, statement he made, in, I think in the 1960s, mm -hmm. that I'm for truth, no matter who says it. Right. I'm for justice, no matter who is it for or against. Mm. I'm a human being first and foremost as such. I'm for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as right. a I take a lot of inspiration from that. I see. Thank you very much. And I hope Jay-Z does that. Dr. Okoboy. <laughs> Dr. Okoboy is a member of parliament for Lejokuku in the greater Accra region. His constituents call him uh, Lejokuku Jay-Z. Jay Chief, good morning. Happy New Year. I, I like your tie and your pocket square yeah, suite. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> made in Ghana, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? The tie. The tie. Okay. The tie and the pockets yeah. and, the, and the beads on them. Yeah, exactly. at least I need to have the blend. Yes. Very important. No, you you you're sharp. New year resolutions for you? Oh, you know, when you are in opposition, your resolutions <laughs> can shake <It's> more. <laughs> Why are you focusing on his? I'm uh, asking your, your resolutions. You. The way you spoke about truth and justice and all, those are the things you need when you're but in opposition. He's, he's a vandal, so I know. But yeah. you need the things you mentioned very well when you're in opposition. Okay. So that your rights uh, <laughs> will be protected. Um, yeah, this year I am actually, there's one thing I'm looking forward to, uh, my government uh, doing well to uh, get all the resources mm. to fix some very uh, important roads in my community. Mm. That's my uh, resolution. The Teshi Link Road. Yes, mm. the road in front of the Lekman Hospital. That is what I'm hoping for. In fact, the day the contractor hits the road, mm. I'll call my gentleman and make him forget where he is now, the okay. position. Mm. He will feel what power is for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the certain is that, the certain is that mm. those rules were awarded, the contract were awarded by the NDC. Mm. By a government that has no money. I agree, but with the government that has gone in for, in fact, a spree of borrowing, mm. they don't even have a gutter. I mean, a gutter. To show mm. and i would ask you to ask him mm. whether he can show us a gutter in his constituency that has been given to contract by this government 
Mm. See, instead of a gutter, I can show you a tunnel Which right one? at the flower pot. No, the Oba. tunnel. Oh, the, oh, you are <laughs> talking okay. about the tunnel. Big gutter. Let, let, the tunnel is please. important to state this. <laughs> As a matter of fact, His Excellency President Mahama yeah. commissioned the tunnel, commissioned the overpass, mm. and everything before we exited. These contracts were all awarded by the NDs, and I have listened. But, to but they are going to mobilize funds. Yes. Yes. You see, I have listened Thank to that. You. I have listened to that argument. <laughs> it takes a political will and determination to to, and foresight to, to see that there is the need for something to be done. I okay. have listened to some of them, including my good friend. Okay. And he says, oh, the NDC awarded that without any money. Mm. I can give you a litany of projects mm. that were awarded by President Kufu's administration without money. At any point in time, at any point in time, so you, governance is continuing. One thing about these people, okay. the positive things are things that, yes, Governance is continuum, mm. but the negative things are things that belong to the NDC. Let's talk about water, because water has no enemy. And the Ghana Water Company last week announced that they were going to start rationing water. Uh, they mentioned that they were having a bit of a challenge in, in trying to generate water because they, uh, some of the water bodies have had their own set of uh, constraints. Um, but the public are not so excited about it. Dr. Pugo, I'll start with you. In, in, within your area itself, there's a Teshi salination project that perhaps trickles down and which has had its own set of issues. What do you make of the water rationing that's happening uh, at this point? Yeah, let me first of all say a very good morning to all uh, your viewers, especially to my brothers and sisters watching from the Lejukuku constituency. Let me be quick to say that no... Um, government or company mm. uh, that supplies water to the citizens would ration water with excitement or would even think of wanting to do it when it's not necessary. Mm. Obviously, once they've got into this stage, then there should be some genuine uh, underpinnings, mm. either with uh, infrastructure, challenges with machines, maybe the, the state of the machines, or with the water bodies that they usually uh, process mm. and then uh, supply to our homes. Mm. You know, over the past few years, Galamse took a heavy toll on the 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 bodies that mm. serve as a um, source for mm. our supply. Mm. And I remember so well, some few years ago, the Ghana Water Company came out and actually said that they they had shut some of their plants down. Mm. Because the, the water that it was supposed to process was beyond, uh, how do we call it, uh, uh, processing. Mm. The level of uh, particles mm. was uh, just going to destroy their machine, so they shut down. So they've had a couple of challenges over the years. Mm. But I'm happy that at least the same Ghana water came <laughs> out to say that looking at the improvement in some of the water bodies after this uh, uh, attempt to, uh, this um, effort to keep a check on Galamse, mm. the, I mean, illegal mining. They, they've recorded some improvement. Right. But by and large, I think when you do the collective analysis, mm. they still have uh, some challenges, mm. which is making them do so. Um, when we get into the dry season too, you know mm. naturally you have the levels uh, going down uh, at some places. Really, I, I am still waiting to look at the specifics. Mm. I mean, the detailed reasons why the rationale, beyond some of these general uh, challenges I can hazard based mm. on their public comments and the challenges I know they've had okay. in the past. I'm looking for the specifics. Mm. Beyond um, retooling and uh, ret retrofitting their instruments, I think the last time I talked to the boss of Ghana Water, Dr. Primer, okay, and he made an interesting revelation that, you see, because of the contract mm -hmm. that is signed with Befisa, the right. company that for, was for desalination, for right. they, they ended up using about 80% mm -hmm. of their IGF to just uh, 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 how do you call it, keep that contract uh, alive, as mm -hmm. in to be paying the monthly um, allocations to the company. Mm -hmm. Other plants, like the one at Spawn and Wager and others, were suffering. Right. Suffering in terms of periodic maintenance and right. investments. Mm -hmm. And that uh, these were some of the genuine challenges we have. So I suspect we have all this gamut of challenges. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into the omission or commissions of previous administrations at Ghana Water and where they've, it's landed them. Mm. The most important thing is to, to ascertain why mm. they are rationing water and to find out quick solutions 
to those challenges so that we can make do, do we know these quick solutions because they uh untold hardship that it may visit on people including yeah. your yeah, constituents yeah, yeah. Uh, has already been envisaged people yeah, are feeling yeah. it already factories yeah. Uh, yeah. eateries chop yeah. bars name yeah. them what do you know yeah. to be the quick solutions see, I'm, I'm a friend of the finance committee mm. at least i've seen about three minimum three international agreements um for, i mean facility like loans i mean to the Ghana Water Company Limited, which was uh, aimed at helping them to, you know, retool, mm. to fix their challenges and all that. What I'm trying to point out is that this government, within this short time, I've not seen that for other um, companies or government agencies, but they have had some resources. My brother, what I like is our money. In this current world, any problem to a large extent, except a few, will be fixed with resources when the company gets resources. In fact, Stanley Marty, who is a corporate affairs yeah. manager of the Ghana Water Company, said that they were rationing water because of the Hamilton one, because of yeah. Galamsey and other yeah. activities. Yeah. Yeah. I have observed with worrying concern, perhaps I'll come to more on this one, how uh, river banks have now become places where people want to dwell. Yeah. In, back yeah. in the day, you didn't have that. You see, when, when, when uh, a lot of activity, uh, effort was started by this government against the practice of indiscriminate mining mm. on our water bodies, mm. some people were like, what, what, what about their livelihood? How did they survive? Mm. But what do you do with money when it is gotten in huge amounts, but there's no water to drink and there's no safe, healthy food to eat? Mm. I mean, you get all the money and you die quick. You know? So, look, when you take just the Kweishi, which is the lagoon right in front of la, uh, the, the la, labadi, labadi beach, beach. in I mean, between Bema camp and yes labadi beach. it's been consumed with uh, uh debris mm. with uh, uh like it's I, I think the sealed the mm. levels of sealed and all that and you have people now wanting to even develop banks as in, as in, uh, closely to the mm. lagoon i've seen someone making an effort to even put up uh, uh, how do you call it uh, petrol um filling station, filling station and all that so our regulatory agencies must be firm mm. and we must remember as a country mm. that you can get all the wealth but when you get it you need to stay but, in but that's that. that's within your constituency yeah it, yeah it's one of these things yeah i think that the mp should take it up yeah and, of and course. deal with the yeah. issues as they come you see we, we've not turned a blind eye i have not turned mm. a blind. i've been into i've been asking questions who is giving the permits mm. where is it coming from what is the project for mm. but as a country we should also be careful not to put everything on the elected official. Mm -hmm. There are public officers who are being, who are uh, supported with mm -hmm. relevant laws, mm -hmm. who are operating and are paid mm -hmm. for. But, but you see, honorable, yeah. that's your jurisdiction. And, yeah. and, and you see, even driving from La Palme to Bema Camp, yeah. uh, it's, it's that Beishi enclave is like a dark alley. Yeah. And there's a, a pavement right in the center. There are no reflectors on it. From, La, from La Palme? A, a driving on to Bema Camp. Yeah. before you get onto the bridge. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a pavement there that has no reflectors. Very dangerous. Yeah. I'm sure Mo has seen it. But, but let me yeah. come to you, Mo, now. Uh, so we're rationing water. And then what? Well, it's, 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 it's a symptom of how incompetent this government is. And let's stop the pretense. It is very clear. Albert Einstein once said that the significant problems that confront us mm. can never be solved with the thinking we had when we created them. Mm. The problems we have at hand are problems that should have been predicted. You have people who are taxed with the responsibility to manage a state facility. They know the number of people who live in this country. Mm. They know the quantity of water that we have in the water bodies. Mm. Now, if you have all this, how can you sit down the extent to which we are in, at, in a situation in which we are? It is not just about the pain that people will go through it is not about the effect that it would have on industries, mm. small businesses. As a matter of fact, it is also a possibility mm. of us being visited with a lot of diseases. Right. You remember when water is not available, mm. the consequence, and thank God he is a medical doctor. Now, if you look at the desalination projects that we did, mm. now the argument is that we spend about 80% of our internal generated funds mm. in servicing something. The question we need to ask ourselves is, mm. what has been the return? Ghana Water says they are losing. Yeah, they spend on. more. Ghana Water Service has been losing. Mm. As a matter of fact, we are told that we lose about 25% mm. of the water that we produced. Now, if that is the internal generated funds, mm. do we have a, a, a funds that are made available 
for Ghana Water Company, or, or they are absolutely relying on internal generated funds. Mm. Now, if the argument is that there isn't any budgetary allocation to manage these facilities, and that they are relying hugely on the internal generated funds, then we have a big problem at hand. As a matter of fact, the consequences of the water, the fact that they are making losses as a result mm. of that project, mm. to, to some extent is also attributed to how it is being managed. That is the point. Now, if you look at the projections, that at the initial stage, you may have some of these losses. Okay. But once you begin to improve upon the efficiency, you'll be It'll able to reduce even. the losses mm. and perhaps break even. And I think that that <coughs> is the purpose. Now, you have a government that decides to say that we are shutting down this regardless mm. the effect it has. They are in talks now to bring it back. I'm saying that shut it down regardless the effect it has. We are shutting it down because we are making losses. Even though there is the possibility, a huge possibility, of us overcoming those losses, we simply do not care. And for me, that is extremely wicked. It is also important for us to understand that Galamse is not everywhere. In some of these communities, we don't have <coughs> Galamse operating. In areas that you have Galamse operating, it stands to reason that it may have some effects on the supply of water to those but, communities. But to be fair, the water trickles down. I, up north, I down agree. South. Mm. But there are, let's look at the water bodies we have. Take the pong, take the water that we have here. How does it trickle down? Mm. Now, even if you look at the distillation, how can you attribute that, that project to, to Galamse? Mm. It is also important for us to see, because Doc was talking about the fact that when this government, the issue of Galamse, and I have commended this government for taking that step, but let us not create the impression as if that it has just started under this government. Mm. Successive governments have indeed put in their bid to ensure that these things were, do not happen. Mm. Water is sound quite known to our survival. Mm. As a matter of fact, our human body, mm. we are made a majority of what is, I mean, the huge proportions of our body is made up of water. Right. To that extent, 70%. Which, 70%. Mm. To that extent, you cannot survive without it. Mm. I am not just looking at people who don't have waters and others, which is a serious case. Mm the consequences. Now, if you weigh mm. between the effects of not doing certain things because of cost mm. on the society, juxtapose that with the cost you would incur. Mm. And I think that you take a reasonable what decision. What do you advise? No. Under the circumstances, I think that this one should be operating. The test is yes, it should be operating it. under the circumstances. Mm. Rationing water like Russian electricity, under the circumstances, it should be operating. Mm. I agree that some will argue that, yes, we are incurring a lot of costs. I thought they told us that there is money in Ghana. Doesn't the Ghana Water Company have genuine concerns? Galamse, Hamatan, uh, cost of production, that uh, is, illegal That is the so more reason others. why, under the circumstances, when we are even told by the same Ghana Water Company mm. that we we'll mm. begin getting water when the rain starts. Mm. You know how many mm. months it's going to take. And I'm saying that looking at the effects mm. of it mm. on the people, Let's disregard the cost so much. Mm. There are a lot of state agencies and, 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 and programs that run at cost. Mm. Must we shut them down because they run at what? At cost. If we can give 2 billion Ghana cities to the Flagstaff House, 2 billion Ghana cities to the Flagstaff House, and they should tell us what they use the 2 billion. Because I'm saying this, you have a previous government, mm. four years, that spent totally 1.3 billion. Mm. Four years. You have a government the first year, they were given more than what the 1.2 billion, now two, 2 billion. And you don't have money to ensure that this thing runs. There are, are, are six new ministries that are operating from the Flagstaff House. Ministry, which would draw the Those funds from. No, please. There were already <clears throat> ministries and agencies that were operating under the Flagstaff House. Mm. There is an issue but that... But six more have been added. I'm you, saying you, that you, you, are you those ministries' that? budgets are exclusive. Mm. They are, they are absolutely... Yeah. And I'm challenging TV3. I'm here, you don't need to Hold on. I, it's, but why? I don't expect you to say they are okay. not. I'm challenging TV3 mm. to investigate, to find out from the budget. Mm. I'm surprised he's a member of parliament and he's saying this. Mm. From the budget, whether the budget allocation for those ministries are exclusive. Okay. And another point, mm. we are being told that they are taking the free SHS to scholarship secretariat. And the scholarship secretariat falls under the presidency. Mm. When already there is an allocation about 1.3, 1.2 billion mm. within that 
for free SHS. Let's come back to I'm what coming. I'm mm. saying this because of the point I made. Right. There is already a budgetary allocation for it from the Ministry of Health. Uh, sorry, Ministry of Education. Right. Now, you are, you are claimed that you are taking it to scholarship secretariat, which falls under the ministry, uh, the presidency. Mm. Now, are you now taking that money from Ministry of Education because there was already a budget line for it? I am saying that check from the budget. Mm. Those ministries' budgets are exclusive. Now, if you can find mm. $2 billion mm. for the presidency, Two billion Ghana cities. And now this one, you are not even injecting money. You are only using 80% mm. of the money that you generate to do this. And for which reason lives can be protected. And you think that that is too much and therefore you must not. How insensitive could this government be? Uh, my brother, Dr. Nkrumah has covered. Yes. Few, okay. but, uh, mm. You see, my brother says something that <clears throat> he quoted uh, Einstein. Right. And that uh, you cannot use the same mind to solve the problems. How could Dr. King? You see, it's not the number of, of uh, yes, yes. It's, 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 it's not the number of uh, problems you live with that determines your nature or character. Mm. It's the, the the quantum of solutions that you have provided or you have in offer that we should use to define you. If we are saying that a government is incompetent and clueless mm. because during its tenor a problem has arisen, mm. then what do you say about the gamut? I'm not even starting to them challenges that the previous governments had that they dealt with. Mm. A classical one being doom so, which worried everybody, industry and... But we saw doom so. You Good. didn't. So, to a larger extent, mm. you should be judged by the efforts you made in addressing doom so, mm. and not its mere existence. Right. Otherwise, somebody could have said that you should have also predicted, okay. based on the number of watts, uh, megawatts we need, the number of Ghanaians we... That is... So, look, every government... Mm. In fact, it is the... the the, the how difficult the problem is that's what defines how successful your story becomes okay. now let me come to um the water issue mm. you see i intentionally said i don't want to go into the activities of previous governments mm. their omissions and, and, and commissions. And i'd rather we don't good good mm. but just to give you a few statistics the contract signed with befisa a meter cube of water mm. is supplied at a cost of 6.5 ghana cities right and it is sold to the consumer at 1.5 Ghana. That, that's what Ghana Water Company says. <clears throat> Good. Says. So they were making, the deficit was 6 million okay. Ghana cities lost. Every cycle of production. Every month. Mm -hmm. And then they, by the contract also, pay the electricity used in do the desalination, right, which is also at 2 million Ghana cities. <coughs> now, you see, over the years, every government, including their government, including our government, there's a lot of capital investment into Ghana Water. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that they can... Supply and help the citizens. But now you have a situation where you've gone to sign a contract mm. under a, a previous government where you need recurrent expenditure of at least 8 million. I'm talking about not capital. Mm. Recurrent. Every month you need 8 million. You need to cough it up to, to yes, run it. every month. Now, when I talked to uh, technical people at Ghana Water who were part of the, who were involved during the time they signed this, they excuse that what they actually said was that mm. because it's so water is so important. They were hoping that government to support them to take care of the deficit every month. Mm. But this is the danger. Every government, as particularly this uh, country, mm. you have so uh, many needs and wants that if you are a company mm. and you are looking at the Ministry of Finance, that's government, mm. to give you a check of eight million every month, outside capital investments too, mm. generally there will be issues. And you see, remember. We've had contracts signed in the Estua government, mm. which after audit showed that either they were inflated. So what, what did you find with this Belfisa contract, and, uh, the, which, the, which was false? Excellent. The information is that, of course, because we believe in the sanctity of laws guiding contracts and all that, Ghana Water is talking to Befisa so that there will be a mutual possible renegotiation mm. to come to figures which can be sustained so that they can remain in business. We can also be in the business of helping our people. Mm. You see, whether we like it or not, government is a continuum. Mm. Honestly, if we had been in power mm. by then, the contract would have signed would have been healthier. This, no, I'm coming. This contract, you see, I, I'm I, teaching I, my I, How do you know that the conditions no, 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 at the time... Look, look, but if you're a government that mm. goes into signing the contract, where you are purchasing water mm. at 6.5 Ghana cities per meter cube, mm. and the rate you are giving it out is 1.5, for how long are you going to sustain that? Bo, okay. You understand? You so, no, 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 please, no, no, please. No, 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 let me tell you. Wrap up for yes, me. Yes, let Thank me wrap you. up. Remember mm. that out of the liabilities submitted by Ministry of Roads and Highways, mm. which, if change had not come, were going to be paid, when this government asked the Auditor General to do a review 
of the certificate, mm. 592 million Ghana cities have been proven to be fraudulent or not to they, be genuine. This is challenged that figure. Oh, no, no. It's not for them. The Auditor General ah. Department is an institution of state. Mm. And please, it's an institution of state, mm. which is not political. Right. When they did the audit of certificates before them, they were able to prove mm. that 592 million. Mm. And guess what? This, if you have such an amount mm. in one fiscal year, guess what we have been losing over the past year? I thank you. Mo, finally, on this one, then we'll go. The auditor report is not absolute. Get that very clearly. Mm. If Auditor General does a work and, and present their report, mm. it is the responsibility of the people for whom those, if you like, adverse findings right. are made to respond. Have they done that too? Auditor General's report can be challenged in a competent court of jurisdiction right. upon which any decision can. For you to sit yeah. here and make that conclusion, as a matter of the fact, hold on, hold on, as, a matter, of, as a matter of fact, yeah. we have gone in for bonds in this country. Mm. The Ministry of Finance has a legal department. Mm. We have Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mm. Your government paid 700,000 Ghana cities as legal fees. Please, please, course. please, please. I haven't. Are, no, I haven't. You are talking. Are, oh, please. You yeah. are talking about you know the allegations the of processes. Corruption. In yeah. any case, mm. if they spend eight million Ghana cities monthly, monthly, mm. multiply that by twelve and juxtapose it with the with the needless two billion you give to the flag. Please, okay. So, please. so, so no, no. no I, it's important I make this. I'm, uh, I, have I, have, I have challenged it's you. Not, I have challenged you. We'll, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll dig into it. We'll dig into it. If you don't and, bring oh, in the oh, oh, no, oh, hold on. No, no, hold on for me. No, hold on for me. No, hold on for me. You see, in this country, in this country, that is the funny aspects of this, of the NPP. You remember when we demonstrated the kind of money that we indeed borrowed? Let's stay, and on, let's stay on water. I, I'm staying on I water. I'm staying on water. Mm. I'm staying on water because, because you're he widening the conversation. No, he did that. He did that. By the way, back. by the way, oh, but you have yet to. So, by, by the way, in response to what he said, mm. by the way, this government clearly, if you ask me whether we can find a solution to this, nobody said that there is any justification in spending that much. And mm. if you listen to me carefully, what I said mm. is that under the circumstances that people's lives can be lost. There can be an outbreak of diseases right. under the circumstances. Mm. Let us still manage with that losses mm. because we have no other alternative. Mm. Tell me where we can get water if we do not take some of these decisions. Uh, thank so you. Let, us, let us do that. Mm. Was looking for a solution okay. to it, and that is the point. All right. I made. So, see, uh, what, take the budget. Last one, just thirty oh, seconds. Mo, mo, thirty mo, seconds. Mo, mo. Look at capital expenditure of this government in mm. two thousand and sixteen. Mm. I stated this yesterday, and I'll state it. Capital expenditure was seven point nine billion mm. under the NDC. When this government came, they reduced the two thousand and seventeen to seven point one. Mm. This two thousand and eighteen budget, capital expenditure is six billion. Mm. So what it means is that they don't have any intention of investing in such because that is where you have some of this investment. He holds a contrary view, but but, but one of the solutions that Dr. Nkrumah brought was to have reservoirs, yeah. at vantage points. Yeah. We don't see them anymore, so that when the taps are shut, yeah. uh, people can go to those reservoirs and get waters. Are we thinking of that? Yeah, I think, um, you see, we have a lot of fine. I've had, because of the desalina desalination plan, mm. I've had the opportunity to meet. Oh, I'm not. See, are, we, are, are we getting oh, that? Oh, yes, no. See, if we're like not, I, then we we'll move see, on. In fact, it is because of the, the desire to sustain that plan. Mm. That's where we are in the negotiation, so that we get a good deal that can let it be sustained for a right. longer period. Mm. You see, I've had a cost to meet some of them. We have very fine technocrats. They have find uh, variables or alternatives mm. on paper. Most of them are capital investments. Right. And this government is also committed in support. Like I said, we've passed some international, we've approved some international mm. agreements. Mm. They've been presented uh, on the floor in parliament okay. and approved. Mm. Ghana Water has resources. They are, in fact, when you come to Lejokuku, you see these huge pipes mm. along the, uh, how do you call it, the Tesh, the tesh link okay. that they are trying to construct and all that. They, it's a process. Okay. They are continually investing in capital. So that we can fix What it. I don't know is whether they would go for this classical uh, incremental reservoir. Okay. They have other ways of also ensuring that water is available. Mm. It might not be necessarily what was done 40, 50 right. years ago. I thank you very but, much. Yeah. Page 18 of the no, Ghanaian Times. No, I, I, thank you, I thank you very much. Page you don't 18 have of, the, of the Ghanaian Times says, is, police <laughs> grab <laughs> fake soldier. At Insom, a self styled military officer has been busted by the police at Intuasuni Insom in the eastern region. Uh, Prince 
Ferguson SL 27 is reported to have paraded himself as captain of the Ghana Armed Forces for the past seven years. Uh, assorted military accoutrements such as uniforms, boots, uh, cap, uh, water pack and kit bags have been retrieved from the suspects by the police. Now, the military went in there. They asked him about his number. They asked him about uh, what regiment he belongs to and he didn't know. But he's a captain. He has been doing this for seven years. Does this spell the state of uh, security in terms of how people are able to acquire uniforms and use it to perpetrate guns and use it to perpetrate all manner of things? Well, I start with you. What well, does this say to you? Well, we have had similar incidences in the past, and it, it, it would be unfair to say that because of this particular, mm -hmm. you know, incident. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, not, however, I'm not just zeroing no, I know, into I know, this I'm, I'm, right. I'm making a point. However, there is no doubt in anybody's mind that we are in a complete state of insecurity in this country. And there are evidences to prove that. If you have four police officers killed in one month, I can't imagine anyone telling me that the security situation in this country is not, is not in a dire state. When you have police officers being brutalized at the seat of government, and what the government does or did at that time mm -hmm. was not to look for those who did that, but they were interested in looking for the person who videotaped the, 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 the incident. Mm -hmm. When you have the same government's appointee, mm -hmm. regional security coordinator, who is molested, beaten, at the full glare and presence of the police, police service, mm -hmm. and nothing has been done. When you have terror groups mm -hmm. that are formed by a political party, financed and aided by that political party in government, and that group walks into a competent court of jurisdiction. But for the intervention of some security agencies, they would have lynched a judge. This thing has never happened anywhere, not even in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt in anybody's mind. As a matter of fact, if you listen to all experts in, in the field of security, they mm -hmm. have all attested to this fact, mm -hmm. that there is a serious security decay in this country. Mm -hmm. And the earlier something is done about it, the better. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not about doing politics. It's about stating the facts. Right. In fact, in Tamale, I was in Tamale last week. Mm -hmm. Something that throughout my young age in Tamale, we haven't experienced rampant and unabated arm robbery attacks mm. sometimes around 7 p.m. It's unacceptable. Mm. And the earlier something is done about it, the better. You see, when people are emboldened, mm. when you have groups mm. that are formed, vigilante groups, mm. by the way, that are all defined by the AU as terror groups. Mr. SL when has done this for seven years. Uh, no, and, I agree. and within the seven years, it beats my imagination how it's not fished out within the seven years. That is why I said that I don't want to use this particular incident wow. because we have had that even in the past where mm. people would manage to get police uni uniforms and others. Mm. Yesterday we discussed a similar thing. Now, how are, are even our sec security services or men are recruited? Right. The extent to which you need to know the psyche of those people. Mm. Investigation is ongoing. Mm. Is it that he got it from a, pre, a, a security man okay. or he got it from the open market? Mm. The question is, can you buy side things from the open the, market? The, the uniform has a name tag. That's what I'm saying. So Belonging to who? He or a different security mm. man. How did he get it? There are instances where police officers, you remember there are a lot of reportage, where police officers even rented mm. their guns to armed robbers. Right. That, oh, he uh, took it on a rent. Mm. I, so that when, when I go and rob them, I'll come back and, and then and pay. Under the circumstances, something ought to be done. There is no denying the fact. Something that like what? The, the brace. Mm. There is the need for the political will. Mm. Now, if you have a group of vigilantes mm. who held the press conference and threatened everybody and said that they are beyond arrest, mm. that is a serious case. So, for me, issues of security, you can never tell who will be killed the next day. Now, police officers themselves are struggling for their protection. Mm and appealing to everybody to see how they can be protected. How more or less you and I, those of us who don't have the luxury of having military officers and police officers guiding us, perhaps they are. Anyway, we don't have the luxury. Speak, speaking, of, speaking of they are, uh, uh, Honorable Koba, yesterday, uh, <laughs> Honorable Kwame Agoja mentioned how his vehicle was shot into uh, by some persons on the road, and he mentions that there are some people who look like vigilantes who have just been brought to parliament. Have you seen any of those... Uh, it, jumpsuit security officials will be brought to parliament. My, you, the, you read a story about someone who was impersonated or claimed to be a soldier right. when he's not for right. seven good years. Right. And my brother we, we, took we, you on the path <coughs> of vigilantism mm. <coughs> and people, <coughs> people acting 
law, in a lawless manner. Mm. That's, that's not fair. You remember and even when I said <coughs> that he, he, said, he said it's all yeah. but okay, okay. I said you can't agree with even this but, 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 let me help incident. You. Okay. Okay. Forgive me. Okay. Okay. I, I want to help you. No, no, no. Don't no, no, help me. Help. No, I, my question is... I'll answer, I'll answer. You don't have a problem. Yes. I'll answer. And then, here you are. Your next question to me is Agboja, Honorable Agboja mentioning some people who look like vigilantes mm. or wearing green and You think that. it's an unfair you question? See, is it an unfair question? It's because it's, you've, you've, you've fed the, uh, onto the bait. Well, you look like them. But that's okay. Yeah. okay. No, no. So I'll, I'll, I'll address, no, no, no. Hold problem. on. Hold on. I want you to confirm for me otherwise. Yesterday, other so people just said issue, it. Yes, yeah, then we'll talk yeah. about it. So I, I've, I've, I've not seen... You've not seen any jumpsuits, security persons. I've not. Not at all. I've not. You see, let me tell you something. You may be one. In this country... Elsewhere, in other jurisdictions, this gentleman, mm. the first thing they will do is to have an interaction with him and see his psyche, like his motivation. Okay. It brings me to mental health. Mm. There's one uh, condition they call delusion. Okay. We have people who have always wanted to be doctors or soldiers right. or judges. Mm. <clears throat> if they don't succeed at becoming a judge, you can see them wearing their... <coughs> Their robes <coughs> and gowns. Sorry their about robes. that. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. You can wear their robes, have their wigs, and either sit at a, a junction or be parading at the courts. And be presiding their own cases. Exactly. <coughs> the same can happen with someone who, have, who had always wanted to be a soldier. Right. Now, how do you tell such things when you do the interaction, mm. the assessment? Especially when the fellow has been wearing this uniform for seven years and maybe you go to his background. He's not slapped anybody before. No, we're told he's, he's been slapping people. Good. <laughs> so I'm talking about assessment. Mm. He's not gone on a robbery before, or he's, he's married. Like the assessment shows that he, a possible. I'm not saying that's what this right. gentleman is, mm. but I'm just telling you of the, the of possible what could happen. Exactly. Right. No. So it is important <coughs> not to be quick to have our own subjective judgment, but to do total assessment. Then you can categorize the fellow as an imposter, okay. one that intended to uh, do um, harmful things with it or and all that. Now, the second one also is that I was just looking at the pictures, mm. the assault, the soldiers the slapping and all that. That is not uh, proper. I agree. You understand? Mm. It's an opportunity to let, we are still not living in 79 <clears throat> or the, some uh, era when the head of this country was one of their own, and it's like the law, it's oh. that of, uh, how do you call it? The, the, so it's important. Even in <coughs> 2017, you know, we had a police, uh, oh, police oh, officer oh, written oh, hold on for me. I'm not talking, no, no, please. It's not about please. the government of the day. It's not about, I, it's no. not about the military the, Yes, ah, yes, okay. it but can be. Look, hold, 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 hold on for me. <laughs> yes, so it's sad. <laughs> and they are so bold, even in front of cameras, you can hear. The law is, you are, they are not a law unto themselves. We are living under uh, this uh, rule of law dispensation where even if you arrest an armed robber, mm. supposed to appear before a judge. Mm. So please, the police, uh, the, the army, uh, how do you call it, the command. The hierarchy. The hierarchy. Mm. They should talk to the officers who went there. These things must cease. It's not proper. Mm. And then, now, let me give you the solution. <laughs> I think you provide this is what is done in every civilized, advanced community. What? Any person mm. who is a law officer, whether immigration, police, the army, they have an ID number and their names on them at all times. Right. Now, in the U.S., in New York, I, I, when I was he in was asked, he couldn't provide Good, them. good. He did, he did not have an ID. He had a name. Mm. There's a difference between your name and your ID. Hanging on, on Exactly. Mm. For seven years. If that had been the norm, mm. it would not take the army to go there and identify him. Meeting him on the streets or anywhere, when I look at a number, I'll just cross-check with command that you have a soldier here. This is the number. When they cross it, they'll tell you we are coming. It's fake. Mm. This could have been done six, seven years ago. Right. And do you know why I'm saying this? No. I have seen police officers. I encountered one recently. He was so unprofessional and so crude in behavior. And when he had no name, mm. had no number, and it was at a public function where mm. even we had a high state official there. When I asked him for his name, he just went away that it's not my business. So immediately, we must develop this culture. If it's not a culture, that's true. It's supposed to be the code of ethics. Right. Every law enforcer, every state law official mm. ought to have the name and ID. That is how we can tell, you understand, whether they are genuine or not. And it also affects behavior. Mm. Let me conclude by also mentioning that it's not the uniform that makes you a law officer. Mm. In the U.S., you can dress fully 
uh, army. Nobody okay. will touch you. What makes you a member of the U.S. Army mm. is your number. So over there, when somebody is dressed and feels <coughs> like wearing an army uniform, nobody goes. But with. as way back as 1996, I yeah. remember this was banned to own a yeah, military yeah. paraphernalia. Good, was good. banned, but, but including see, firecrackers. Where we use this mechanical a cake method, you always have problems. It's not. It does not take a ban. Make sure that the one who is a genuine member of the army, mm. they have their number on them all at all times. So, so, we, so that, that gives people the impetus to apply no, no, themselves. That, no, no. You see, that is when you have created a situation where it is the number mm. that makes you one. Mm. What people look out for, even for the genuine one, mm. is their number. And do you know what it's going to do? No. It will help to flash out all these armed robbers. Who but, but, but you see, Doc, the, the police and the military, they yeah. use their numbers. Perhaps I've not seen the military yeah. wear their numbers, but the police have their Look, numbers. I said I encountered mm. this police officer less than a month ago. Mm. This is a police, it's not other ranks. This is a senior officer. What was he doing? Yeah, we, we went for a function at, uh, what's the name? Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Safo Kantakis. Right. Uh, the his, exhibition. His exhibition, right. And this was one of the command heads. I'm talking about a command head mm -hmm. of the other police officers. You see, officers. Doc, you are, you are, uh, you are being unfair. I'm coming. No, are, I've not mentioned it. You see, no, I'm no, just... No, no, not the police. You are mm. being unfair to the military. Mm. And the reason why I say this, I agree with you when you talk about the beating. Right. It's unacceptable. Yeah. I, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Even in the United States of America, we have imposters. Right. Even in Europe, we have imposters. Now, I'm saying that when there is an imposter and the person can create a name, mm. create a number, someone can do that. Right. How many military of he is not operating, he's not attached to any military garrison. Mm. He is just using it at specific times right. for purposes known to him. Maybe. It takes a lot of investigation right. and community participation mm. to be able to establish that this person is not a military officer. I'll give an example. When we're in Legon, mm. there was this young man who came to Legon. He came to Legon, and you know, if you were in Commodore Hall or any of the halls, mm. perching in Commodore Hall. Right. It's, he it's wasn't normal. a student. Mm. He wasn't a student. Okay. He was attending lectures. For three years. See, Hold on. He was attending mental. lectures for three years. To what purpose? It's I don't, he, had, it's, he wrote it's, SSS. Okay. He didn't pass. He came home, told his parents that he passed. Okay. He told parents he, did, he got admission. And, you know, and that gentleman was there. You see, you can't blame the university for having such a student. No, no, I'm not it takes, no I'm coming. Yeah. Now, if you say that they should have done, even in Europe and America, the examples I you know, have cited, there are people like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we simply must understand is yeah. that the community participation is very, very important. In I fact, agree. in fighting crime, you need the collaboration of the society yeah. with, with the, the, yeah. the military and the yeah. security I agree. Now, when you made reference to 1979s yeah. and others, that yeah. is why I had no other option th than to refer to you yeah. that mm. even as late, recent as 2017, not any other place, not at Makwala, at the seat of government, you had a police officer who was manhandled, beaten, by groups that are known to government. Known. Uh, and you have your general yeah. secretary who says, look, see, there are okay. members who are not disbanding this. You see, when you make such statements, see, we are compelled see. to make such references. Uh, not to compare, but we see, need no, to no, look no, at see, You could have avoided see, that. No, no, no. You see, my brother Mutala, you are, I know you, I will not say you are a strict academic, but you are sort of an academic. When you are talking about issues, there are exceptions. Right. I agree. Mm. But if you look at the widespread nature, not because of the head of that government, okay. or the widespread nature with which uh, military officers uh, did engage in excesses. Okay. That's, I'm talking about the general decision. Mm. Not if it happens now. For 2017, we have had that. I to that before yes, yes. Even under civilian dispensations, you can have a military officer misbehaving himself or herself. Mm. Those can be exceptions, but you always talk about the general cave. Mm. I mean, in the 70, in the 79, which I was talking about, when we had military heads and all that. I mean, their behavior, obviously, the general behavior was not like this. Mm. My brother, you see. I like what he said, that you need community participation. That's the most important. Right. The tool that helps the community mm. to effectively and efficiently participate, mm. to identify quack ones. It's a number. Excellent. And and, yes, and we have a culture where if Someone we go out, the number, oh, oh, I know, but that's why when I see a fake number, mm. a policeman in my community, and I cross-check, I'll be the first person to tell them that, check this number. They say there's no exist. Okay. They are coming for him. Okay. This gentleman wouldn't have survived for seven years right. if the culture in this country mm. is that every officer on the streets has a name and a number. No, but I, I, I asked how he got the unit. Right. 
You see, oh, you I, can buy from. No, 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 that's your original. No, it's not. It's not the one on the street. I said you can buy from the shop. No, dog. I, 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 I have dog. dog. I asked how store. he got the uniform. Okay. Assuming that the uniform belongs to a proper military officer. Right. Assuming. You are now discussing. Or, or, no, 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 I'm saying. Or it could be belonging to his father. It's, it's yeah, possible. Yeah, 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 so, so, so if the name is there, the number could be correct. Mm. The number is correct. See, the name is correct. Yeah. It will be very difficult. No, no, I know, but you see, I'm happy that inciting an example, he went to a gentleman who was attending lectures for three years. Yes, three solid years. If you study psychiatry, mm. classical case of a mental disorder. So, you so see, that's we, why we, you see, we, we will come to uh, that conversation I, I, I later because friend, even our mental okay. health, the provision that goes to them is questionable. Yeah. But let's talk about Gitmo to wrapping up. The, the quagmire gets mired. The story, the plot thickens as we make progress. Uh, now, with all the heat in the, the studio, the US, you, you the US, okay. the US. What did I say something? Is that determined to you? The US, the US discuss? ambassador <laughs> yeah. said that well, uh, it's gone beyond them now. It yeah. is between us yeah. and the detainees. Yeah. Are you surprised, first of all, at yeah. the the comments made by the US ambassador? Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. You see, the US authorities when they approached Ghana mm. way back in 2014 when the negotiations started to take two of their own. Remember, their president had taken the proposal to their Congress, mm. which is the equivalent of their parliament. And guess what? They shut it down. Mm. That don't resettle them within prisons in the U.S. Mm. Find a place and take them. Mm. And we, as a country, opted to take them. And guess what? I was chilled <laughs> by the revelations that were made by uh, Malik uh, Baku that the interior ministry mm. in a series of correspondence signed by James Agaga, then deputy mm. told cabinet that we advise you against taking the Gitmo mm. that it could have security implications and political consequences mm. this is the interior ministry of his ex uh, excellency president john dramani Mahama, his own interior ministry mm. telling him that don't go for them now the foreign affairs he ministry then please uh, please mm. the foreign affairs ministry then mm. kept on re repeating letters to the interior ministry telling them that look we are still in the process of going for the gitmo too right. and they got confirmation that we still stand by earlier advice mm. don't go for them for being like and adobe excellent the same interior ministry under President Mama, signed by Agaga. Mm. But cabinet is a superior body. Cabinet took the decision, mm. headed by the president, of course, to go for the Gitmo to against the advice on of humanitarian the grounds. On, on yes, mm. on uh, 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 on compassion. Mm. The, the base of a uh, or is it a, is it compassion or? You, know, you look for the yeah. humanitarian. Yeah. Humanitarian. Yeah. Yes, yes. He, said, he just showed that. compassion. Yeah. <laughs> but it is interesting mm. after having lost the election. They didn't not only lose power, they've lost the compassion as well and the humanitarianism. Are you, are you saying that on the face of fact? How come that it is not, if it's not only for the mere sake of argument mm. and uh, engaging in, in mind discourse and argument, how can you have a government mm. that was so compassionate to go for two suspected terrorists? Okay. Their compassion was so huge that they went for them against the advice of the entire ministry. Mm. The same government today in the opposition, the same group, mm. is now telling the incumbent government that send them back where is the compassion now let me come to the issue just but uh, but you have been questioning you have been questioning uh that this is not yeah, yeah. a good decision yeah, yeah. and let me show so, you so you yeah. have power now you have let me right show you our consistency revoke the our consistency number one we argue then that the president did not have the power mm. to soul moto with his cabinet bring in two sus sus suspected terrorists under an international agreement which had not been seen approved and ratified by parliament right That's and right. the courts vindicated our group right. as in the mpp the opposition that these guys had a solid case you need to bring it to parliament and guess what the court said if you don't take it to parliament to ratify send them back it shows the strength the balance of powers mm. and what the courts could do now they are saying that okay it's six send them back do you know that the agreement had in it that sending the terrorists the suspect terrorists back to the u.s after two years it's not an option it's, it's, not, it's not true it's not true. it is true that is false please please it's not false that is absolute. supply the that uh, is contrary evidence what what so this, well, we're, we're not seeing the document that's so. absolute Dude, and i should tell you the level that of the has please, indicated it falsehood. Falsehood. It, uh, 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 look the fact that you've not seen an agreement mm. when they are staying in ghana can affect you tells you the level of transparency of the historical so Let so so they uh, they are staying here expired in two uh january 6 2017 good good 2018 who is who is 
taking care of the upkeep now because good, the U.S. Good, presented good. stipends for them. Yeah, for after two years. That yes, yes. You see, sometimes when you ask that a document comes to Parliament, mm. people think it's just for the fun of it. No. They said they have an adage in Chi that Nyansa Nyina Ni Right. That's to, 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 to so wait. Long. You don't have all the uh, the wisdom in one hand. You know what? If the, if the agreement yeah. if the agreement had come to Parliament, mm. the questions being asked now, some of them could have cropped out there. Right. So that in, in coming to the agreement, such important clauses and conditions mm. would be taken care of. Now as it stands, the US was obliged only to pay for two years. Mm. The stipends. The compassion was so great then that mm. if I looked what to happen to you? Do you have compassion? Does yeah. this MPP government have compassion enough? I have seen, <laughs> yeah, please. I have seen a document mm. read openly by a senior journalist in this country. A meeting between U.S. government and Ghanaian government. And in the meeting, what happened clearly was that the U.S. Mm. The U.S. was told, or this, the, the, this government discussed the U.S. to help find ways of relocating the two right. in either Morocco or Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now, it came out clearly in the meeting that the position of this government remains what it had in opposition. That we are not comfortable having these two suspected terrorists. It was in such meetings mm. and follow-up mm. that it came out that the former government did not only sign an agreement. Mm. They took steps to solidify and entrench their stay How? by who is paying for the upkeep? It's the state. The state. Yes. How you much, and I. How much does it cost? You us? and I. Do you, you know should, how much you it costs? You got to ask him. No, I'm asking you. You are, you you are paying the bills now. Man. Well, oh, well, now we are handling the mess, so it's good you ask me. So how much? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? Uh, uh, quickly but, then uh, we'll go to Mutala. On, on the do you note, know they are doing uh, business in Ghana answer the question. Is, how much is it costing us? I said they are doing business oh, in Ghana. No, yes, but that, that how much is it costing us? You know. not finish with the, <laughs> the thank you. You know, uh, you know, let me go by his logic. Yeah. At least it reminds me of my philosophy 101. Mm. That the NDC was demonstrating compassion and the MPP was demonstrating principles, the safety and the security of Ghana. Mm. If you agree, that our compassion has been thrown to the dogs, then your principles yeah. and your interests. Oh, I'm using your logic. Mm. In logic, I don't necessarily need to. Okay, we have run out of time. Plus, we want one. If you agree no, that the time. NDC has lost the compassion, mm. you have lost the principles, you have lost the integrity. Oh, no. You hold on, hold on. You have, have hold on. You have lost the security of this country. Mm. Let me bring to your notice yeah. that we are operating an executive government. No country can... Im yes, an executive government, if you don't know. But the courts Hold on, please, please, please. Oh, government. please, can I, I finish? Mm. We're operating an... Oh, please. It has got nothing but to do with... But were you not obliged to take in the... Hold on, can I... Can I will, will he allow me to make my point? It's deliberate. We are operating an executive government. And I'm saying that the extent to which there is a Supreme Court ruling... Right. You have no any other business leaving these people here. If your position was that their mm. presence in Ghana mm. was a threat to the security of this country, mm. you have the powers now. Mm. It doesn't matter what NDC did. Mm. And in fact, that powers are supported by a ruling of the highest court of the land. Well, what do you, Hold what do you on. Say? What do you Can say to the thought that your government was not truthful or that, honest that, that is not in true. declaring the full no, details? No, we declared in the ruling. first place. Mm. The Minister of Foreign Affairs peddled falsehood. When she said that they were given Ghanaian passports, when she said that they were given refugee, refugee hold on, they were given, they were sorry, given. that they were given refugee no, no, status. Yes, yes, yes. This is not true. It is not true. What it, it is not true. What travel doc? Please, the only legal travel document mm. yeah. with which you can leave this country yeah. is either a passport or a document that has the capacity and the influence of a passport. Mm. It's been proven that that is not true. No, Dr. Ayeni, no, please, please, please. You please. Please, uh, oh, yes. can uh, I send the, 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 the those refugee I'll send yes. Yes. It's not true. Oh. Dr. Ayeni had indicated so, that... So the refugee that is office is not... Dr. Ayeni had indicated that you guys peddled falsehood. And I'm saying... Oh. So, but that's granted, the refugee office hold on. I'm saying that granted that all those things were given. Mm. Yeah. We're operating an executive government. Now, if you are so principled, mm. and you indeed hoodwink, 
the religious groups in this country. <sighs> Hold on, you did that. So they don't this, have a mind of Oh, I'm saying, saying you, that? you who would win. Please, please. I say you who would win. How can we Please, the, I'll still make those clergy. Clergy. You would win. Serious. You would win the clergy. How? And to believe. You had clergy. You can't. You oh, the, don't play to the Don't play to the sentiments. Don't play to the sentiments. Please, you had clergy who gave you, who gave the president source and other source. Who did outright politics? And I'm saying that. No, I said you would win. Would winking someone, you can would wink someone with lies, and that was precisely what oh, you did. So the you would wink, lies. of course, oh, it's possible. You, you would wink Ghanaians and would wink the clergy. And I hope the clergy the, you would doctor, wink, boy, you see, dog, it's, you are too, you are too nice for that. I mean, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. You would wink the clergy mm. into believing your story. As a matter of fact, before these people were brought to Ghana, President then candidate Nanado was met by the Americans. And what? And he said that he had no problem at is all. That you remember? You remember? Is, is that you is remember a before the elections? That is an you remember no, the, no, before no, the elections? No, no, you remember you before evidence. the elections? Mm. We consistently wanted no, to know the position evidence. of the largest yes, opposition yes, leader yes, in Ghana, yes. President Nanado. Is it true that you have that tied the evidence. hands of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the government? I am saying that you have the powers now. If you, and, and I think that well, it, explains, it, explains, it explains why the NBC was voted out, out of power. Okay. You have the powers, you, you couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I thank you very <laughs> much for your time. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Bernardo Kubo is a member of parliament for uh, La Jokuku out there in the Greater Accra region, and he speaks on behalf of the NPP. He's joined us this morning in this flashy bow tie. And, uh, the Comrade Mutala Mohammed is also a former Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry and is on behalf of the NDC. I thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. you. He's trying to hit my head, head with the climate. Welcome back. So it's time to talk about fires because the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, is mapping out an intensive fire public education program. Certainly, it's time that we prevent it rather than allow it to happen before we make a lot of noise about it. Speaking to me is Nene Pabitengyaku II. He's a chief of PON, but he's also a member of the Fires and Lightning Technical Advisory Committee of NADMO. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So for Pong, I don't know if there are so many fires there, but certainly, maybe let's start off from there. Oh, okay. Uh, um, there's not much fires. We have not mm. experienced much fires over okay. there now. But at least we're talking at large about uh, you know, the whole country, right. and especially this Amatazi season, season, and uh, you know, the expectation of uh, people that since the dry season and everything being dry, mm. it's all over. So one just have to be very careful. Right when using fires. So in being careful, how would you tell people, educate people to do so that they prevent the fire from happening? Because sometimes it's difficult. Like you said, it's dry and someone goes to his farm and he wants to do his yes. little burning, but it becomes a big issue. Yes, especially if you want to talk about the burning, mm. especially the farms and so forth. You know, realize that the dry season, you see the leaves be green, right. but very dry. Mm. Now, uh, to prepare your farm, now we're going to bushfires. I mean, the yeah. real name for that is wildfires, Fire. not okay. bushfire. Right. Okay. What now, will the difference be? Okay. Wildfire. Mm. Fires which is just raging uncontrollably. Okay. We have controlled burning and uncontrolled burning. Okay. When you start a controlled burning and you do not control it, it becomes an uncontrolled burning. Okay. Then it becomes a wildfire. Right. Wherever it wants, it will go. Okay. So... Again, locally, we have a parlance, we say uh, fire belts, fire belts. Mm. Fire hasn't got any belts. What we do is that you have to construct a line. You have to uh, construct, dig to the soil about three, four feet, okay. the edges of the, where you want to burn. Okay. You know, so that if the fire starts from somewhere mm. and it gets to where the place is cleared, mm. not just to the surface, but to mm. the soil. Mm it will break okay okay so okay. it will not affect mm. you know where yeah, you don't right. want to be bent right. you know but we do have not been able to educate the public much on this mm. and for that matter when there's this uh, you know wildfires you know the farmer himself gets trapped mm. because you tend to run ahead of the fire okay and you can collapse right. and what kills people most during this wildfires or bushfires it's not the fire itself. It's the smoke. smoke. The inhalation. You inhale a lot of smoke, mm. and before you realize, 
you suffocate, mm -hmm. collapse, and possibly the f you are lucky when the fire gets there, where's you up? Right. But that will be on the field. So when we translate yes. it to our domestic settings, but what do we do to prevent fires there as well? There are a lot of things we can do. Mm. It's all education. Okay. Because fires are not taught in the schools. Mm -hmm. And even, even people go to school who still have illiterate. People don't go to school. So if, if fires are taught in the schools, what of those who oh, are not attending school? Right. So it's a matter of all of us, those of us who will understand what we are saying, mm -hmm. will also pass it on to mm -hmm. the people at home. Mm -hmm. Most fires, about 90% of fires, are started by human activity, right. carelessness. Mm -hmm. You see, most fires at home is through our own fault. For instance, uh, you know, in the past where we have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, power rationing, right. you know, they do so. And even now, some places, people who, you know, live in kills and decide to go for all night or whatever, mm. light a candle, and then to be burning. Right. You know, if you sleep and a candle burns to wherever it will burn to, and it gets to the wood which you have mm. placed the candle on, automatically, if you are asleep, the candle will not wake you up. Right. It will keep on burning. Mm. So people realize the whole kills will burn first, then it will spread because fire is not static. Yeah. Fire spreads. Yeah. You know, the next thing will be heated and then it ignites with the support of oxygen. Mm. Then we are there. It but will spread all over. Right. But for you on the technical committee, yes. I'm, I'm asking you this question because you have been at the helm of affairs. Yes. What for you do you think is the challenge most Ghanaians face when it comes to attempting to fight fires even before the fire service gets there? Yes, attempting to fight fire. You see, mm. most of them when there's fire, people forget that even they have telephones. Right. Most fires, when it occurs, it's rather people from outside who okay. rather calls the attention of the fire brigade. Mm. You panic. Mm. So you forget that you have a phone on you. Right. And even the phone number to call the fire brigade mm. is another thing. And which is 192 mm -hmm. directly. Okay. 192. Just 192 and it will get to the fire brigade. Mm. Then they will come around and help you. Mm. But most of them, when they aspire, people will attempt to fight the fire on their own. Right. They attempt to fight the fire on their own. And that's where the challenge And that's is. where the challenge comes in. Mm. You know, because you don't know what you are doing. And it's not all fires that <laughs> you just have to apply water. Right. If but you, okay. Finally, let me just ask you a question because I'm interested in finding out. So the fire has started in my yeah. house. What can I do to help myself and those in my immediate environment? Yeah. What you can do, mm. because you do not have knowledge about how to fight the fire. Right. The first thing is just get out of the place. Okay. Close the doors and windows okay. to prevent air, mm. for that matter, oxygen. Okay. Because the more the fire gets mm. oxygen, the more it will also, you know, uh, burn and then spread to okay. affect other things. Mm. Close the doors and windows. Mm -hmm. Don't say you left your bag, you left your phone. <laughs> so you're going back right. to go and collect. Right. And like I said. You will panic. So shout. Shout for help. Mm. You don't just, you know, go out and then, hey, fire, my house is burning. Mm. I mean, who will hear you? Right. Shout. Mm. But maybe the fear grips them so much that they the can't fear. shout. But finally, with the fire extinguishers, yes. how easy is it to use? Because it people are taught. But when it happens, they don't seem to be able to apply it. It's all it. about the panicking. Mm. Because when there's fire, you need courage. Okay. take time right. to know what to do with the extinguisher. Mm. To have an extinguisher is mm. not enough. Right. If you don't know how to use it and use it well, it's useless. It certainly is. S some extinguishers should be operated upright. Mm. So if you go and turn it upside down to operate, <laughs> you know, then you are not doing anything. Mm. You know, so it's not enough just having an extinguisher. And people should have time and patience and even invite the fire service or the firemen to your home, your homes, if you like, and then to educate you. Right. It, you know, it's not just because you, excuse me, you bought an extinguisher, mm. so I've, have, I've got it in my car. There have been situations whereby there have been fire. There were a lot of extinguishers. I'm not talking about TV3 here, mm. but it's possible that you have extinguishers here, but right. maybe. You have not been trained how mm. to use the extinguisher. Well, we certainly have been. We certainly, let me just let you know that we have been. And we hope that when the fire comes, we'll know how to then handle it. Then I'm giving you properly. this, this mm. one that it have occurred somewhere else. Certainly. Whereby there was this fire. Mm. People were there. There were extinguishers. 
But because they were not trained, one would pick an extinguisher and throw it into the fire. Mm. Of course. Because say fire extinguisher, go and fire the fire. <laughs> then you throw in the, the extinguisher into the fire. Right. You know, it happens. Mm. So, so it's not just enough having an extinguisher. Mm. You should know how to use it and which type of extinguisher to use, to use on a particular fire. Right. Not just all fires, then you go and collect water and then pour, like fire. petrol or cooking oil and so forth and so forth. No. Fire well. And you know, let me add also this. Mm. We should also, I mean, this in our buy, we should always think about fire. Mm its usefulness and its harm to society Very well. because normally as a training man i normally ask my students to choose one fire and thief which one so i'm asking you which one will you choose uh, maybe fire you Seems choose like fire. I can fight it. you yes. can fight it unfortunately you cannot fight it mm. so rather change to choose thief okay i'll choose none have you seen a thief carrying a building away no. Yeah. Have you seen fire raise our building? Yes. So which one do you choose now? Right. Thank you. Okay. Very well. On that <laughs> note, I have been speaking to <laughs> Nene Fabi the II. Mm -hmm. He's the chief of Pomba. He's also the member of the Fires and Lightning Technical Advisory Committee of NADMA. Certainly, I'm sure you've learned a thing or two about mm -hmm. how to fi fight fire and how to prevent it also. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. Stay here with us. God is all uh, and in all. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday to you. There's a special dedication from us to you as you celebrate your birthday. Live long, stay strong and prosper. But your message is here on WhatsApp. It says, hi TV3. When talking about water, we're already facing difficulties here in Tamale. In my area for about a month now, our taps have been closed. They should do something about it before we die of uh, simplicity in Tamale. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, good morning. Uh, frankly speaking, the security lapses under the government is becoming worrisome and mind-boggling. Uh, authorities must wake up. Calling for national prayers by the police service is ridiculous. They should rather call on the government of President Akufuado to provide them with logistics. Who? Hmm. MPP. Allah would serve us. Uh, from save us from this incompetent government. Fuel price hike, uh, Tikuma, Tamale, Central Region. TV3 New Day, good morning. The MPP are always guilty of their own actions. They were thinking uh, the NDC will use the illness of the vice president to do politics just like how they did to the late president Mills. They are simply chasing their own shadows. Please tell our vice president to come home and fix the health state system and stop traveling to other people's country for health care. Smart Brugis on Tamale. Hello, good morning. Uh, Honorable Okobo, I should stop the long talk and do something about the roads and gutters in Teshi Nungwa. The gutter has been abandoned for 10 years, which is very bad. This is Ama Teshi Nungwa. She obviously is not happy. Uh, Walanyo in Akwitia says, multiple swearing in now becomes issues. If I may ask, what's the what does the constitution say? We need to respect our constitution unless the law is changed. If not, let's respect the rules of the country. TV3, you are the best. Good morning to you and your panel. Uh, Dr. Baumia and his wife should give us a break over their video. If he is well, he should please come back and work for Ghanaians. For, uh, that's why we voted for him as Vice President. Vidash from Kumasi. Good morning, Johnny Hughes. I'm highly impressed that Mr. Agbeko and the local government minister appearing in Parliament for interrogation about the Abruhaha of some names. Johnny, please, I need your number. Oscar. Uh, I'll look for you. Send a message to the WhatsApp number so I can go and reply to it quickly after the show. Good morning. To be very honest, we're tired of the back and forth between these two political parties. We actually do not care uh, what happened when whoever is in power. The truth is, if it was bet not better then, it's not better now. We just focus on solving the problems and stop pointing accusing fingers sheepishly. God save Ghana. Good morning, TV3 and all your cherished viewers. The Ghana water shortage is never caused by the current government. You can all testify the measures this government has put in place to stop water pollution in Ghana. The current government have all the genius human resources to sustain uh, water in Ghana. At first, it was power. Now, it's water also being re rationed. Uh, but has the electricity issue been dealt with? Gafaro in Tamale wants to know. Good morning, Johnny. These people of Tamale are living in fear, a robbery, especially those living in the outskirts. Please, IGP, do something. Uh, Honorable Koboy should know that what he's talking about, uh, does he know that the police or military law 
can apply minimum force in the line of his or her duty? Why is it that the society is always so snappy in castigating the state security apparatus when they are discharging their lawful duties? Do you by any means know, uh, telling us that the fake gentleman in military uniform wears the uniform for fun? Do you know the number of crimes he might have committed with this uniform only for the main agencies to be blamed for their acts? It's hardly uh, we hear of water rationing as they say water is life. Why are they rationing water? The reasons given by the water company, uh, PR, is extremely contradicting. My advice to them, they should do all... Uh, no, we will all... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Nah, bro, uh, uh, okay, and finally, fake soldier. There's an insider in the military who has, over the seven years, helped the fake one to live. This issue should be handled with intelligence. I believe this will add, uh, improve our security. Evans in Kumasi says... Talking about Gitmo 2 refugee status, they are suspected terrorists. The NDC shouldn't have granted that at all. And that's the mistake. So the NDC man shouldn't sit there and tell us stories. But yesterday was a big feather in the cap of media general operators of TV3, 3FM, Connect FM, Akuma FM, uh, and uh, 3news.com. A new innovation that's showing on TV3. Only 12, 13 episodes gone, and yet it's shifting paradigm and generating waves. That's what the Minister for Tourism, uh, Culture, and Creative Arts, Catherine Afeku, had to say about Media General. Congratulating it for the innovation as Sadia is Ghana's first ever Ghana novella. Not telenovela. That's a Ghana novella. And Sadia showing on TV3 Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 p.m., Take a listen to what the minister had to say and the following reports by Solis Rose Quarte. The proliferation of foreign content in Ghanaian media was a topical issue which resonated throughout the tourism ministry's interaction with the media. <laughs> He's such a bad influence. I don't like him. Sadia is a purely Ghanaian 100 episode television series put together and telecast on TV3. Barely two months after its premiere, the series has caught on with households and gained recognition of key stakeholders in the industry. Media General has done something that deserves the applause. The series Sadia which started airing on TV3 a few weeks ago, is one of the answers to drown the telenovelas because it's a competitive global village that we're in. The quality is good. I urge you to see it. It is well scripted with a tight plot and a creative cast in the hands of a very creative director who is local. The storyline for Sadia looks at pertinent issues such as patriotism, patriarchy, love, family ties, as well as rural urban migration and other accompanying issues. The series showcases a refreshing pool of young and veteran talents. A big thank you to the Minister of Tourism for commending us. I must say that this is the beginning of more things to come. Regarding Sadia, we realized there was big appetite for local content. TV3 has always been the best setter when it comes to good programming. And so we thought we should show the difference, we should lead the way. General Manager TV3, Beatrice Abbey, reiterated the company's commitment to ensuring that viewers are not only entertained, but also educated. The feedback has been tremendous. We work with figures, we work with market intelligence. And so from Geopo, from our market intelligence, TV3 is leading on the time belt when it comes to Sadia. We have great following on social media. We have great following on um, traditional media. And so I would ask that if you haven't started watching Sadia yet, you should watch. There are so many lessons you can learn from this uh, series. It is for everybody. It's for that young girl coming up. It's for that young boy growing up in that community. It's for the husband, the wife, everybody. And Sadia is just the beginning of many more local productions to come. We believe in investing in local productions. When you invest in local productions, the returns stay right here in the country. Catch Sadia this and every Monday and Tuesday at 8 p.m. Only on TV3. Definitely, there's more to come. If you haven't watched Sadia so far, you've missed a lot. But certainly, join the train. It shows Mondays and Tuesdays at 8, right after the news. You just switched to Sadia. It is interesting to see <laughs> our very own Johnny Hughes. 
you, you are always I'm, talking I'm, about the I'm, men I'm, chopping the small girls. Like, I'm, you are doing something. Like, no, I'm yeah, acting the script. I'm, yeah, acting acting, the script. I'm just you? trying to mirror what the society is doing. That <laughs> is not nice. We thank you. You understand? You are doing well. But, but kudos to the minister for recognizing yeah. quality. Certainly. Uh, I, I, I wish that the ministry would go beyond just, you know, talking about uh, innovation and mm. perhaps add some small coins to the thing. Because... Uh, rightly, we want to shift the paradigm mm. from the, uh, the foreign content to yeah, our local yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it takes a lot of money to it produce these does. things. Uh, there are people who can produce, but mm -hmm. they don't have the means to produce. Uh, yeah. They don't have their assistance. I've, I've read in one of the tabloids today that uh, the tax rebate or holidays on equipment that will help the hospitality industry right. and creative arts are being waived. Mm. I, I hope that to we're do. able to we do some so. of those things. Uh, yeah. But to the ministry... Mm -hmm. Uh, something small, no feel so we can uh, produce. Uh, okay. There are 100 episodes in this one, yeah. and we're just about 14, 15. So, mm -hmm. no feel. No and coffee. for those of you who think that um, you know, Sardia is all English. Fortunately for you, it's not. The local dialect is also spoken yeah. and is translated or transcribed for those who mm. can't understand. And so there's a blend of the Ghanaian yeah. culture yeah. India. And certainly, I do enjoy Sardia. You mm. should watch it because mm. the Gibsons have a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, Charlie. There's there's lot. Interesting plot as we go. So, uh, good morning to you, Madam Katrina Feku and uh, your Deputy Ministers, Dr. Ziblim. Good morning to you. Uh, we're looking forward to your kind donation to help the production. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my bosses have said thank you to you, but this is my own appeal to you. Hey there. No go feel. Yeah, it's no go feel. Mr. President, good morning. No go feel. If you enjoy it, you understand. Uh, crunchy chrome, my dear friends, who are this kind of air. No go feel. Bye. Good morning. Anyway, guys, it's a lovely Tuesday. It's time yeah. for us to wrap up. We'll see you same time, Godwin, tomorrow. Mm. That'll be midweek, mm. and that'll be the end of January. And that'll be the Crew, day after finally. Mr. Agbeko, Mr. John Agbeko, would have appeared before Parliament. Right. We want to hear what he has to say. Explanations as to why we can't.